start. Alright. Hello and welcome back, ladies, gentlemen, citizens of all realms and kingdoms of the world. We greet you with open arms back into our, uh, I should say, Sobeko Tep's Ancient Egyptian Pharaohs tier list, sponsored by Sun and Bronze, and by, uh, when he joins us later on, also sponsored by Alexander Ball, a country ball tale. I am God King Semurabi, or Sam, or whatever the people call me at this point, and I am here to help host with our great ancient Egyptian, well really ancient history papyrus posting hub lord himself. Yep, so I'm, I'm so Sobakhotep, as you all probably know. And yeah, we, today we're gonna continue our stream where we rank all the pharaohs. And uh, two days ago on Friday we started it and we ranked all the Old Kingdom, uh, First Intermediate Period, Middle Kingdom and Second Intermediate Period Pharaohs. So today we're gonna continue with the New Kingdom. Uh, yeah, just as a quick uh, recap, uh, basically last time we ended up with uh, the Pharaohs uh, Secondary Tao and Camus who defeated the Hyksos and drove them out of Egypt, basically uh, starting the New Kingdom in the 18th Dynasty, from which we are going to now start today. So that was a and pretty what, interesting event, and uh, yeah. What champions they were to, like, they were chads, from Tao being an incredible, just, he possibly died in battle protecting and rebelling against the Hyksos, and then his son following his footsteps. Carmo's doing the same thing. Just beautiful. Yeah, Brilliant. That, that was that was a pretty pretty epic tale. And uh, you know, not not something that happens very often in uh, Egyptian history. It's usually it's pretty pretty calm and um, you know the pharaohs rule without uh, even going to battle uh, oftentimes, but uh, th this was this was pretty different and a pretty new, unique moment in its history. Yeah, definitely an old and middle kingdom, but for the new kingdom pharaohs, at least there's a few that come to mind immediately, we might have some very badass men coming up quite soon. Yeah, it's it's gonna it's gonna change a bit with the new kingdom, as the Hyksos experience kind of changed the Egyptians' attitude towards the various nations surrounding them. Absolutely. Well, you want to start us off? Yes, so we are now starting with Amos first, who is the brother to Camus, and uh, he is the founder of the 18th dynasty. And so basically he was the one who uh, basically finished the conquest of the Hyksos, uh, taking out the remaining uh, holdouts and uh, pushing them into Asia. And uh, he was, yeah, he was the one which basically finished this war for, uh, after his two pre predecessors. Yeah, so immediately we're faced with a young man who, when he was seven years old, his father was killed, and when he was about ten, his brother died of unknown causes after he only reigned for three years. So he assumed the throne at probably the age of ten. And he immediately like for started at least he probably would have been under the reign or reigns of a, a vizier or two who helped him drive out what was left of the hyksos at a young age yeah i think i think it, I, like I read that. that it was his mother as a regent and uh, she ruled together ah. with a, 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 some other egyptian nobles so basically they were in charge for the first few years and they also did some important stuff to uh, drive the Hyksos away. So basically, that whole family and everyone they, you know, they did their their jobs to continue this campaign. He reigned for about twenty five years as well. So from about ten until like thirty five, it's not bad. Yes, it's something like that probably. My immediate concern is that his mother was the one who was acting as regent in his stead when he was about ten. Uh, but 
Oh, no, no, never mind. After he defeated the Hyksos, he began campaigning in Syria and Nubia, and a campaign during his 22nd year reached Jehi in the Levant and perhaps as far as the Euphrates. Okay. So, look, I'm not seeing much wrong with him. In fact, I reckon he did a pretty good job considering a lot of the other uh, pharaohs we'd see on these lists. I mean, yeah, he, he, he still continued that uh, fight against the Hyksos and the others in Asia, and he, you know, he stabilized the country and uh, did some pretty, pretty important stuff. Look, I can't fault him at the... We've even got a mummy. We've got his mummy. That's really friggin' cool. We don't see that a whole lot with a lot of the early pharaohs. Okay, look, he's pretty great. Yeah, yeah. I'd say he was probably riding on the coattails of his father and brother, and I can't give him all the credit for fighting back against the Hyksos at his young age. But when he was old enough and he started doing this stuff by himself, absolutely. I'd give him great. Yeah, not quite yeah, yeah. I, I agree. So, you know, it's not, he, he already inherited basically most of the kingdom as it was mostly re reconquered, but still, still he uh, finished the fight. Uh, so that's, that's still important. Groovy. I like it. All right. Well, well earned in the great category, I believe. Yes, so now we we have after that uh, Amenhotep the first, who is uh, his son, and uh, he succeeded in around uh, fifteen twenty five and uh, reigned for around uh, twenty years, and he he continued those campaigns, uh, apparently, apparently not only in Asia but also in the south in uh, Nubia or Kush reconquered some of the lost uh, areas there. His reign is poorly documented, which is a shame, but from what basic history we have available, we are able to piece together some uh, important stuff. Like, I know his name. Amenhotep is a very... That's as Egyptian a name as you could get, a bit similar to Rahotep, who we saw earlier, I believe? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he reigned for about 22 years, which is pretty good. Um, he had a foreign policy. Did some building projects, had a large, nice mortuary complex. Tell you what, he's... not given me a whole lot to work with that's real interesting, I'd guess. Although he was deified upon his death, right, that helps. Yeah, and, uh, well, like I said, he did some, he did some uh, important campaigns in basically all di directions during his reign, so he brought back some, uh, some stability at the, at the borders. I'll say he's he's cool, but he's not great. Yeah, I, is no. that heretical? No, no. I think that's a that's a fair estimation. So you know, he didn't do anything like too special. Um, yeah, he's a pharaoh that reigned, but he's not mediocre. He did good stuff. I think that's fine. Yeah, he basically just continued that uh, what his father did. Just mm. uh, cleaning up around uh, around uh, the, the different regions uh, where there was some still still some conflict. Yep, works for me. All right, he's fine. Yeah. Yep, can't uh, hold him. So now now we have uh, Tutmos the first, who is he is quite quite an interesting figure, and uh, he was uh, the. The son of Amenhotep the first, although that's uh, a bit unknown. But probably yes. the son. He definitely received the throne after the death of Amenhotep. I'm not exactly sure of his relation myself. Um, but he. Right, so I, I also know about Thutmose the first, or at least the name Thutmose is familiar to me. He's got a very important family. I know that much. 
Yeah, basically, he he just did lot lots of campaigning as well, and there was the I think the first one to reach the Euphrates River and uh, conquer everything in the uh, in the Levant uh, south of that. So that was. Oh. Uh, he... Okay, here's here's something I can praise him on. So immediately upon his coronation, Nubia rebelled against Egyptian rule. So according to the tomb autobiography of Amos, uh, Thutmose travelled up the Nile and fought in the battle, personally killing the Nubian king himself. And upon victory, he had the Nubian king's body hung from the prow of his ship before he returned to Thebes. That's pretty interesting. I mean, of course, it's probably going to be propaganda. Oh, yeah, a, yeah, it's, uh, it's hard to say when, what uh, exactly happened. But that's pretty, like, look, pretty praiseworthy, pretty badass if he helped lead his people regardless into battle. Um, definitely a lot of rebellions, but he also did a lot of work with building projects. Yeah, and he basically established, like, the typical New Kingdom uh, borders in uh, in Asia and Africa and uh, basically expanded Egypt to its larger, largest extent, so that's that's pretty impressive. Yeah. And his his mummy has him smiling. It's pretty chatty. So he's borderline great or fine for me. I can't really decide which one he is. I mean, I, I would leave I, this up to you, I think. I, I would say it's closer to great because kind of set, set his borders and obviously there were different rebellions and all that, but uh, he still managed to defeat defeat Kush and defeat the Canaanites and uh, take over Syria and all that, so still did quite a lot of stuff in like 20 years and uh, expanded uh, Egypt and made it into an actual empire. So I think I think it var warrants the being in the category of great. Alright, I can give him great. Um, so now after that we have uh, his uh, son, Tatmose the second. So let's have a gander at him. His body was found, he's the son of Thutmose I and a minor wife. So he was therefore a lesser son of Thutmose I and chose to marry his fully royal half-sister, known to the people as Hatshepsut, in order to secure his kingship. We'll come to her in a minute, don't you worry. Yeah. Uh, though, some archaeologists believe that Hatshepsut was the real power behind the throne during his rule because the similar domestic and foreign policies that were later pursued under her reign because of her claim that she was her father's intended heir. That's pretty interesting following up with, you know, she did all this stuff, she was crowned pharaoh herself. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of difficult to say how, how long exactly she re reigned for because even unofficially she could have he had uh, quite a lot of uh, power over the official pharaohs, including Thutmose II. Yeah, it's even said that her, the Queen's agents actually replaced the big boy king's name in a few places with her own cartouches on the gateway. Uh, so I'll tell you what, sounds like Thutmose II was cucked a little <laughs> yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, you kinda... Oh, a bit of a pushover. Yeah, it's... I mean, I mean, manipulated by his wife behind the scenes. But you know, he still did a decent job. He still, like, uh, you know, secured the kingdom and uh, uh, contained the rebellion. So he d he did basically what was expected. So you know, can't can be. What was expected? Yeah. Look. He's fine. Yeah. I can't give him any higher than fine. I wanted to give him bad, but he did. He did do a job. So, and it's not mediocre. So he's fine. I don't see what's wrong with fine. Yeah, yeah. He uh, he basically did what what was needed. So, so that's still pretty. 
Yeah, it works for me. Yeah, so now, so now we go to Hatshep, so, so that, that's a very interesting case. So it's basically the second, uh, the second female pharaoh, at least uh, as far as we know. Uh, Definitely so... the most well-known one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and until you get to Cleopatra, but that's different. That's different. Yeah, and you know it will be quite a while until that. Uh, yeah, we got a long time before we get to her. So, basically, the Hatshepsut, episode, we, you know, we had quite a lot of stuff. First of all, the the monuments. You know, she's really well known for her her uh, building projects, all the all the temples and. Uh, monuments and all that so uh, by that point Egypt was quite stable and uh, its enemies were uh, put down so it could uh, once again focus on uh, on internal matters and uh, so Hatshepsut uh, did just that and uh, you know built lots of stuff and that was that was pretty cool but also she she still had some campaigns during her uh, reign to uh, fight with the rebels and uh, other enemies. So there was that as well. Hmm. See, I'm seeing a lot of arguing back and forth with a lot of historians over whether she, you know, her reign challenged or upheld the patriarchy and what the extent of her, you know, what the extent of her legacy has. And... It's hard to argue either point, with and you know without bringing in any sort of uh, opinion played politics when we don't have a whole lot of evidence to suggest one or the other. All I can point it, you know, agree on is her accomplishments, like you've said, like she did a lot of work with trade routes, building yeah, yeah. projects. One one of the trade trading things was uh, trading with uh, Punt, which is like a. Uh, a very little known kingdom in uh, eastern africa but it was apparently mm. pretty pretty rich and had some important materials and she conducted expeditions there so it uh, opened up egypt to more uh, different uh, trade networks so again that was important for the economy mm. Look, I'll admit she did the work that she needed to do. There's um, there's not a whole lot to really touch on with her otherwise, other than you know she's become a an icon in the eyes of um many many feminist uh, archaeologists or at least idealists as well. From what I'm, you know, it, it's it's a political thing at that point can't argue with all of her all of the work she has actually done yeah i mean uh, uh, th there's done. like uh, a discussion about how uh, in her later years she uh, kind of presented her herself more like uh, like a male pharaoh but uh, you know that's mm. that's probably just because you know male pharaohs were uh, the, the most popular, obviously, and males were expected to be to succeed. So, uh, to be in order to be more more accepted by the nobles and the general public, uh, mm. she she probably wanted to present herself that way more. But, you know, I I don't see a problem with that, and uh, I think she's legendary because she's a female pharaoh. That's as much as I can argue here. I'm. Beyond that, like I'd give her great, but I couldn't give her magnificent because yeah. she didn't really get up to a whole lot otherwise. I mean, yeah, I'd say I'd say it's it's pretty great. She'd be comfy and great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't you guys hate me because we put her in great and not in not in magnificent? She's yeah, still pretty great. You know, the, that magnificent tier is still like pretty, you know, we gotta keep it limited so that it wouldn't be too too crowded. Indeed. So yeah, but, but you know, so far we're uh, off to a really, really strong start with the uh, uh, New Kingdom. And Absolutely. Uh, Especially since we're moving on to 
Uh, Thutmose the third now. Yes, and uh, he he ruled for quite a long time, uh, fifty-four yeah. years. So that's one of the longest uh, attested reigns. Immediately, he's also earned the title of Thutmose the Great. Yeah, but that's... but uh, he he basically started ruling uh, from the age of two. So his first like. Almost two decades were actually ruled by uh, his uh, mother. Uh, so, no. Wait. His first words were, "Am I king yet?" <sighs> well earned. Yeah. So basically, uh, like uh, the first few. Few decades uh, were just him trying to uh, actually gain the throne and uh, gain some power as uh, uh, he didn't. Uh, the, the, the regions were actually in control, so it's him trying to get the throne for himself and not only the, the ceremonial title. Hmm. My goodness, look at his achievements. Military campaigns everywhere. Tours of Canaan and Syria, the conquest of Syria, the attack on the Mitanni, the tours of Syria, Nubian campaign, monumental construction. He built it and con he constructed over 50 temples. Yeah, yeah, and during his reign, there was that uh, legendary battle of Megiddo, where the. Uh... Uh... The Canaanites and uh, all the other uh, Levantines joined up in a coalition and tried rebelling against each, but ultimately were defeated and their city was destroyed. And there is obviously that story about how, because of this battle, that uh, for the Armageddon arose. So that was one of the most important battles in ancient history, and he he uh, he was leading his armies there. Look, this is a this is a good pharaoh. This is a guy who did a bloody good job. Yeah, he he basically uh, you know his predecessors conquered the territories, territories, but he was the one of the, who uh, stabilized everything in the, in Asia and in uh, Africa. Just. Uh, put down the rebellions and made it into a coherent uh, empire so it was still very very important right look there's no doubt about it he's got to go in the magnificent tier i'm not having any of it otherwise <laughs> yeah yeah i guess i guess so he was one of the who you know stabilized it and uh, put everything together so and, you know, we can, can't complain too much about him. Definitely not. So, uh, after that, we have uh, Amenhotep II, who was his son. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't I don't really like this guy because, you know, I, I, I read quite quite a lot about him and uh, made, made, some, made some memes. You know, oh, he, he, I've seen what you're talking about. Yeah, he fought he... a lot less than his father. His reign saw the effective cessation of hostilities between Egypt and Mitanni. Uh... Yeah, but but he basically he 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 did some some what what would today be considered considered uh, war crimes and did some did some pretty pretty pretty, pretty, pretty terrible stuff and uh, to his uh, subjects in uh, various places. So you know, I'm I'm, I'm not really a fan of his. Look, on one hand, he claims to have been able to shoot an arrow through a copper target one palm thick, and he was able to row his ship faster and farther than 200 members of the navy could row theirs. I, uh... I can see why some Egyptologists maintain uh, some concerning skepticism about the truth of these claims. So he's boastful, but he's also a bit of an ass. Yeah, he he, I don't know from what I I read, we basically like went to Kush many times and uh, just did many massacres there, uh, and uh, you know made made the region the region not really, not really be a fan of the Egyptians. 
Oh, Estella, from his final years, highlights his openly contemptuous attitude towards non-Egyptians. Here we go. He was a racist. He was a violent racist. Yeah. Oh, yeah. boy. Amenhotep wrote some uh, awful things about, yeah. He, oh, he did not openly record the names of his queens. He felt that women had become too powerful under titles such as God's <laughs> Wife of Amun. Yeah. Oh, 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 dear. Yeah, so, so, you know, you know like, like I said, you know, I'm not, not, not really much of a fan of this guy. He was, you know, he had all, all the, all the worst uh, qualities. This is, this is a terrible guy. Yeah, yeah. So... Vile. I'm, I'm, I'm putting him at uh, terrible. You know, he. he kinda... He'll be happy down there with. Who else did we put in terrible? He'll be happy down there with uh, with Teti the third and A the first and Peppy the second. Yeah. You know he. For shame. No, this wasn't really a good uh, good time to be living uh, in Egypt during these uh, two decades. You, know? no. <laughs> you probably, oh, no. probably had not. a high high chance of your entire uh, village being uh, randomly executed. So, you know, just not not really a uh, great time. He, she created, he committed war crimes. He was a racist. He was a sexist. He was just a general ass. He spoke very highly of himself, and yet doesn't seem to have many other redeeming qualities. Yeah, yeah, he's terrible. You can be happy there. <laughs> yeah. Um. So after him, we have uh, Thutmose the uh, Fourth, who was his son, and he ruled for uh, about uh, ten years. Uh. But yeah, I, I actually don't really know that much about him. He had a pretty short reign, and so, as far as I know, didn't really do that much stuff. Yeah, you're not kidding. Only about ten-ish years, from what I can see. His most celebrated accomplishment was the restoration of the Great Sphinx of Giza, and the subsequent commission of the Dream Steli. But yeah, beyond that. He was not actually the crown prince, and Amenhotep II's chosen successor to the throne. And so some scholars speculate that Thutmose ousted his older brother in order to usurp power. Hmm. He then commissioned the Dream Stilly in order to justify his unexpected kingship. Hmm. If that's true, we've uh, got a bit of a snake in the grass usurping power for himself. He hasn't done a whole lot otherwise that's real impressive. I mean, uh, he, he's pretty he's pretty mid, so maybe mm. mediocre. Yeah, he's a bit mediocre. Can't mm. say bad. He's not quite bad. He's definitely a bit mediocre. Yeah, I think that's, that's, uh, that's where he should be. Um, but now, now, right. now, now we get to Amenhotep the Third, who is also called right. Amenhotep the the Great or Amenhotep the Magnificent. So I guess that that already suggests <laughs> where where he might end up. Um, and you he... better justify it to me, because I'm a harsh host. Well, he. He ruled for quite quite a long time, about uh, forty years, and he basically like uh, set the standard for uh, like uh, Egyptian foreign policy because after Amenhotep the uh, second, uh, Egypt basically ended its uh, campaigning periods, and uh, as its borders were now kind of stabilized, so Amenhotep the third he basically engaged in. Uh, in diplomacy for the most part and uh, from what I know he supported the Assyrians and so allowed them to break uh, free and defeat the Natani kingdom so this uh, gave uh, Egypt an important ally in Assyria and uh, he also uh, uh, like uh, 
he 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 made some some other rallies as well, like the Mycenaeans, I think, during this period, they so closer to Egypt. So he basically like asserted uh, Egypt uh, in the foreign sphere, but but not do not with his military, but just the diplomacy, and I think that's be yeah. pretty pretty important as well. He had a lot of international relations. That's pretty good. Um, I just noticed, came across a little note up before I do go on. Uh, hello to all of our viewers at the moment. Uh, both Dankwart and Meltsu have said hello. And we would like to welcome you to the stream. Make yourselves comfy. You get to listen to the sweet, dulcet tones of myself and this Lithuanian Chad. Uh, on that note, I have come across, uh, amongst other things, Amonhotep is quoted by the Babylonian king Kadashman and Lil I in firmly rejecting the latter's entreaty to marry one of the, this pharaoh's daughters. And he said in this note, From time immemorial, no daughter of the king of Egypt is given to anyone. Yes, yeah, so, so that's, Ooh, that's basically because, because of that uh, Assyrian and the Babylonian uh, rivalry, because... Like I said, the Amenhut of the third year supported Assyria and allowed it to become independent. But uh, Babylonia obviously wanted Assyria for 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 itself, and so as Assyria became uh, Egypt's ally, so Babylonia then became Egypt's enemy. So he he made some allies, but uh, that obviously means that he made some enemies as well. So. Yeah, the the Babylonians and specifically the Kassites who were in control of uh, Babylonia at that time, they became uh, enemies of Egypt. That's interesting. Other than that, he's a fairly good guy. He might call himself the Magnificent, but I can only give him as high as Great, I think. Which is still fitting, as he called himself Abmenhotep the Great. I mean, I, I know, he, for me, he, he might reach into the uh, greatest, uh, the magnificent category, because you know he. he, did, uh, he did. I have just come across his monuments and legacy as well, and there's some pretty iconic ones here too. Yeah, he. You also, know what? So he he built some. Uh, look, like, yeah, look. He he you was know what? he, he was he was a friend of Sobek as well, you know. You can see, see in this image, so, so that, 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 <laughs> yeah. raises, that raises him even, even yeah, higher. Yeah, see this? See this fella? This, this, he's, he's my mate, right? Right? I might be the big croc god, but uh, this fella right here, he's your god, mate. Yeah, look, at he's good quality, isn't he? Yeah, you know, I mean, if, yeah. if Sobek approves of him, so uh, I obviously approve as well, so... Uh... You suck up. <laughs> All right, fair enough, fair enough. Look, I can give him, I can give him magnificent for that. Yeah. I also, also can't uh, say the same about our. Uh... Yes. Uh, I also heard that that uh, the host of uh, ancient uh, Egypt podcast. I, I don't know if you if you listen to it, but uh, I I used to listen. He basically considered the man who had preferred his. Uh, Great a favorite and the greatest uh, pharaoh of all time. So, you know, a man who the thirty definitely has some uh, some followers. The the irony when he's also the father of probably one of the most notorious pharaohs of the period. Who I've got to scald the rest of my beer for this one. Oh, oh because yeah, no, he's no, a... no, 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 this is going going to be get pretty pretty. Interesting. Here's a fan favorite, ladies and gentlemen, Amenhotep the Fourth, better known as Akhenaten. Yep. So uh, basically, he he, oh. he was the son of Amenhotep the Third, and at first he was named Amenhotep the Fourth, but I think in the fifth or sixth year, then his like uh, new re religious beliefs uh, set in, he changed his name to. Akhenaten, which you know is means uh, effective for the Aten, the uh, sun god, uh, or the, one of the sun gods of Egypt. Uh, you know, as many of you probably know, Akhenaten instituted the basically a sort of new religion, which is the worship of Aten, and uh, Aten was made the the single. Uh, 
god of Egypt, uh, replacing all the others. And during uh, I cannot enjoy many many temples of other gods, especially Amun. Uh, they're uh, they're closed and uh, just many priests that are fired from their positions. And there was this huge religious uh, upheaval. And uh, men, men didn't, men didn't like that at all. And there was definitely some op- many much opposition to this new uh, religious change. So uh, he's definitely like, very, very controversial. This pharaoh changed everything. I can note off the top of my head the things that he did because he's so memeable. He's just <laughs> yeah. hilarious. Um, like immediately for starters, he threw out the pol- like the pantheon of Egyptian gods and went, nope, see them? They are no more. The only god that matters is is the Aten, our sun god. And so he changed his name from Amenhotep to Akhenaten to prove his loyalty to the Aten. And he did the same with his kids as well, who changed their names later on. We'll come to we'll come to them, don't you worry. He even built his own city. Oh yeah, uh, he, he, believe he, the city of Akhetaten. Yes. Yeah, he replaced. Was... He repla- replaced the capital of Egypt. Uh, he moved it from uh, where it was before to his newly built uh, city. But it was he uh... built a city and claimed this is now the capital. Right. This is where all the business has to happen now. Okay. And then he died, and then it was abandoned. How shameful Akhetaten or Amana, as another, uh, as a lot of other people would know it as. Uh, he he changed the art. Another big one is the art. His own, like during his reign, is probably the only time we see his art, like unique style of art, which depicts the god king and queen and a lot of other figures in the art being more rotund, more round, more fluid, more to be completely fair like humanoid like a lot more 3d as you can see with uh with so extreme it's it's a far cry distance from the usual sort of egyptian hieroglyphics and drawings and depictions we would see where everything was relatively flat 2d here we can see how you know the legs are relaxed the body is the bellies are round and you can see the curves so much easier it's fascinating and yet it only really lasted his reign this early yeah this, there's, there's this so much world to wasn't talk about. even uh, wasn't even 20 years so it was all mm. all happened really really in a very short period of time it started in his like fifth uh, year and so in actuality only lasted like a decade and uh, so it was everything was repealed after his reign uh, almost immediately so this was a very short period uh, because the, the priests and everyone else after that uh, basically re- reverted back to the previous uh, era of Amenhotep the third and uh, the previous pharaohs between his bad apparently he may have also had poor health or possible illnesses uh, which would explain why he had such a strange figure and appearance. There's so many... Like, he has had such a strong influence on history and, and in popular culture as well, no doubt, alongside Cleopatra and Alexander the Great as a very popularized ancient historical figure. And yeah, he's probably no, one not, of the earliest... Not in a good way. No, not, not in a good not way, a good so way, quickly. Yeah. Not in a good way. Um, not to mention he's one of the earliest known forms of monotheism that we would know of, like that we have so much written documentation on. Even though the people tried to wipe him from history after he died, just washed him away like he never happened. You can blame his son for that more than likely. Look, we can talk about Akhenaten for hours, to be fair, but we know where he's going to go. Yeah, I mean, he, he is... I mean, if there's any heretic, then, you know, this this, this is him. <laughs> you know, uh, there isn't really much, much arguing about that. The heretic pharaoh goes in the heretic tier, and that's where he stays. Yeah. He because... was not great. I mean, you know, we can't really just uh, say that none of the... Uh... And if uh, former gods exist and only only this one uh, sun god exists, you know, you, you can't really do that. 
uh, that's not how it's done in, in ancient Egypt, so that's, that's pretty heretical. That's disgraceful. Should be ashamed. Yeah, and, uh, you know, uh, basically, yeah, basically everything in Egypt uh, changed for a while because religion was very important, so it was tied to everything, so to culture, to art, and uh, so uh, as religion changed, everything uh, also changed, but since it was only a few years, these uh, changes didn't really stay there. They're pretty easily re reverted back after Akhenaten was uh, was dead. Yeah, it, as you can see, it didn't quite stick around. He didn't have as big an impact as he thought he would. He became uh, another footnote in Egyptian history. All right, well, with him out of the way, then who do we have following after? Yeah, so now we have like a series of like. Sh as uh, pharaohs who ruled only for a very short time. So, first there was uh, Smenkari, or here Smenkari the second materialist, and uh, he's like a bit of an unknown who, who first ruled like he jointly with Akhenaten, but after his death for like a year or two on, uh, on his own, but that's also kind of questionable, so uh, it's kind of hard to say uh, how much power and for how long he exactly was in control. He had ruled for a year, more than likely, which is pretty... It has no clear evidence of his, of his sole reign, but from what we can tell, more than likely, it was very short, more than likely, as far as a year. He has... And he can't really... Uh, achieve a whole lot in a year. Uh, not to mention, you're following up with Akhenaten, the man who ruins the country. Uh, it's, it's We ain't got much to really go on, other than the theories that I mean, follow uh, up. Like... Yeah, but he basically just, for a very short, short while, continued uh, Akhenaten's uh... Akhenaten's dealings because he uh, he ruled like together with Akhenaten in his later years for for a bit and then by himself so he basically just tried continuing that so but again it kind of didn't really last all that long yeah look this guy's not really impressing me I know his name but I know nothing about him and he hasn't left much of a footnote he's a uh... I mean, I, I mean, I, I would say it's it's still the heretic tier because he he continued the the same stuff that Akhenaten was was doing. So you know, uh, I, I would. Melsu has commented. I say he deserves some pity because he was given a rule of a train wreck. Which I can I can understand that. However, he's probably still going to go on heretic tier because he didn't really do much to change the uh, history. I think did he pretty much followed on with uh, Akhenaten's rule, though yeah, he didn't yeah. really encourage any changing. He didn't have time to change anything. Yeah, throw him in the heretic tier. He, he, yeah, he was. He is like a a, a, lot. a uh, co-conspirator, so gotta gotta go in the same same tier. Uh, but yeah, that that's about it. And after that, we have. Uh, uh, Nefer, yeah, have fun pronouncing Nefer, this. Nefer Neferaten, who was a female pharaoh, and uh, uh, there's like some, uh, you know, it's difficult to say who she was, but many say that she was actually uh, Nefertiti, the, the wife of Akhenaten, but also she could have been uh, Meritaten, the wife of Smenkari, so uh, she was probably one of those. Or maybe some maybe some say that she was the daughter of Akhenaten, so we don't even really know who she was. Like you can see, like there's like four different, three different names for her, and uh, just in general a bit like lots of right. like, lots of questions about her identity. All right, give me some space. I'm gonna go for it. Nefer Neferuat. Nefer Neferuaten. Or 
Unc I'm not even going to attempt her other name. Oh god, Ankeperure Merit Nefek. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, we're moving on. A female pharaoh, uh, bad name for shame, probably an alternate name. What else we know about her? Yeah, I mean, like, we don't even know who she was, so we, <laughs> even, even that we don't know, so no, 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 not much. Jeez. Right, okay, well, if we ain't got much to work on, we know she existed. She didn't do a whole lot. She's depicted in some art. Uh, possibly. Um, right, look. And, uh, you know, like, like I said, she, she's, you know, there are many theorists on who she was, but, like, one of the theories, m most popular ones, that she was Nefertiti, the, the, the main uh, wife of Akhenaten, so, and that she ruled uh, just uh, for a few years after his death. So there, there, there is that. If we make her Nefertiti, I'd put her in the fine category. If... Uh, no, no, never mind. She'd still be heretic to Yeah, I mean, I, I mean she, she was his wife, so she basically did, did, did the, the same as him, and uh, they were kind of portrayed both kind of equally in those uh, Akhenaten era paintings and sculptures and all that, so, you know, she, she also engaged in all that uh, heresy. Yeah, so, you know, not if, to mention, you know, that that's pretty much it. All that heresy. She was still married, potentially. To... She's got Arten in her name. Heretic tear. Put her there. Yeah. She stays. There. I mean, in, in any case, she's kind of like he, she's related to him, either uh, if she's like his wife or his daughter. In any in any event, she's related to her. I cannot and like uh, very much so. Indeed. So after that, after a few more years, we now have Tutankhamun. Who, who no, that's not his. That's not his birth name. You got to say his birth name. Ah, Tutankhamun. Or, or what do you mean? T yeah, Tutankhaten, born oh. son of oh, you know, yeah. son of Akhenaten as the yeah. Aten. Though he did change his name to the name that we know him best by, Tutankhamun. Uh, reason he changed his name, well, he, um, so everyone knows Tutankhamun. He's, he's the boy pharaoh, he's the one who's in the cartoons, the pop culture, the history books, the, the one with the golden mask, the icon that is pretty much synonymous with ancient Egypt. Yet, he had a fairly mundane reign, didn't he? I mean, you know, Aside from his awful health and short reign as a child, and yeah, a uh, potential curse, very bad health, and then he changed the history. Look, the only reason he's going to go into Magnificent Tier, because we're going to put him in Magnificent Tier. <laughs> uh, yeah, is... no, 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 I don't think that will be happening. Yeah. The only reason he'd be going there is because everyone knows him. That's all we can give. Uh, as uh, Miltsu has said, I say overrated by a long shot. Um, then Dankwater said, I think he sold oranges. That's... <laughs> I, I don't know nothing about no oranges, but I can tell you he's definitely a bit of an overrated pharaoh. But I, I his mean, tomb... I mean, he, he probably didn't even really uh, rule for, like, any period of time, because he died, like, being uh, 18 or 19, so before he had that, he wouldn't have really had, like, really any time to do anything, so it would have been, like, uh, the regents who make the decisions for him, so you, can, you can't really even say, say that he really did anything himself. Yeah, exactly. He's had a short reign. He's... The only reason we know so much about him is because his tomb, it, it was fully intact, fully stocked with all of the treasures and items that were put there. Upon yeah, but, but his death. you know, it it could have been like any pharaoh, so that, that doesn't really that doesn't really matter. 
Yeah, no, like that's that. the only reason we know so much about yeah, him. Is yeah, because yeah, but you know, it's, 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 it's just luck, so uh, he doesn't yeah. really give him uh, any advantage like during his, during his reign. Are we going to be ableist and say if he had really bad health issues that got him killed, that makes him a bad pharaoh? <laughs> um... hmm. This, I can't say he's bad when he threw out his father's, uh, you know, his his father's religion and reunified Egypt with the old, the old ways, the the proper pantheon. I think that yeah, makes but, it pretty. But, good. You know, like I said, he he wasn't really even in control because he was just a a, a child during his reign, so he himself didn't really do anything. So he didn't do anything. He was physically disabled. Probably had bad, he had scoliosis, several strains of malaria, a deformity on his left foot, bone necrosis that required the use of a cane. Died young, son of Akhetaten. He's a bit. He was a bit of a mediocre pharaoh, wouldn't he? I'd only put him in fine because he threw out. Or it wasn't even him. It was probably one of his viziers that made the decision one of his regents, yeah, yeah. but are we really going to say that Tutankhamun was a mediocre pharaoh? I mean, yeah. Yeah, man. Why not? You've heard it here, folks. Oh, boy. We're going to get some angry letters. I mean, I mean, I, I would have even said that we should put him in uh, ir irrelevant here. <laughs> that, that would have been pretty, oh, <laughs> pretty no, funny. No. No, we can't put him in a relevant tier because that suggests that we don't have anything to know about him at all. No, but, ah, we yeah, can't put him there. You know, it's just Pharaohs who didn't really do like anything of of note. So uh, I'd put him in me mediocre, mediocre at best. Well, yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess so. I just... can't say Tutankhamun was irrelevant. He contributed to history. Yeah, but, like, in the, 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 what he achieved. The, the ranking them from the perspective of, you know, being uh, of uh, from vo those times, not from the modern times, so... It oh, mean... I'm ranking them for how shit I think they are. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, whatever. Whatever we can... You know, that, that's why this is open discussion. If SBNT was here, I'm guaranteed he'd throw a wrench in the works as well. Hopefully he won't be too far away. Yeah, so, so you know, this, this is quite an interesting case, so man, there can be many, many different uh, yeah, arguments I made. It, yeah, I wasn't expecting it to be so grey area with Tutankhamun. I thought he'd go into, like, a nice decent tier, but no, he's actually really weak. He was a weak ruler <laughs> with health issues. Uh, actually, I kind of want to put him into bad now. Yeah, um... I mean, uh, it's not like he did anything uh, that bad, but just, he didn't really He was just a weak ruler. Didn't really do anything notable either. Yeah, we'll leave him at mediocre. We might come back to him. It was, it was basically the, the regents and the vizier who did, did all that work and uh, reverted back the religion and, and everything, so uh, he, they were actually in control during those decades. Yeah. Um, He's an interesting case. So now, now we have actually the, the vizier is uh, A the second, and uh... Hey! Hey, I'm ruling here! <laughs> and uh, he was, yeah, he was the vizier during uh, Tutankhamun's uh, time, and uh, even before he was like an important official, so he was like actually the one uh, in control during this period, and then uh, by himself uh, for a few years. Uh, So, you know, so uh, you perceive that he was the one who, who kind of 
re reverted back the religion and uh, all that stuff back to the previous uh, previous uh, state which was during uh, Amenhotep the Third's time and for that. This guy's a bit boring considering the rest of the uh, people we've seen. Although, um, I don't know. Um, he had achieved the title of Overseer of all the horses of His Majesty, the highest rank in the elite charioteering division of the army, just below the rank of general. Okay, so he was a military man. Um, other, he had a lot of titles listed on his tomb, including the fan bearer on the right side of the king. Uh, uh. The great hymn to the Artan is also found in his Amata tomb, which was built during his service under Akhenaten, so... It was built un under his service to Akhenaten. So that doesn't make him a heretic. It was already built for him. But like, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting because he was at first, like, uh... Uh, in league with Akhenaten and uh, his gang, but uh, later on he kind of switched back to the previous ways, so it's kind of har hard to say. Yeah, he was a military man, but that's all I'm really catching up. Like, that's all I'm really reading on him, other than, you know, he ruled for only four years after, you know, as soon as Tutankhamun died, he went, oh, 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 okay, that's my chance. And he fills the role I mean, of the he, power he, vacuum. He probably had the control, uh, like, even if unofficially, even uh, the previous decades. Cause, uh, that's true. I had the Tutankhamun was only the A child, so A was actually the one uh, ruling. Uh, from the shadows, and uh, you know, he probably he had uh, a bit of a longer unofficial reign, probably uh, possibly like up to two decades. Yeah, this guy ain't really working for me. I got I got nothing on him. He's uninteresting. He's a bit of a dick. I've got nothing nice to say about him. He's he was you know probably the power. The, he was he's the vizier whispering in the ear of the pharaoh yeah you know it just it just depends if we consider him uh, still a heretic like uh, Akhenaten and uh, all those or I uh, do consider him to not be a heretic I can't say he was a heretic because he wouldn't have been buried as a heretic. He would have been... It's it's interesting. Um, because by the time he died, they'd already... The gods had already been re-established. At least that's what I'm, you know, gathering, considering he ruled after T Tutankhamun's death. So if that was the case, he would have been buried not as a heretic, but as uh, someone who was following the old gods again. The yeah, exception to uh, that being that... Uh, his burial was later desecrated by the successors who tried to remove all the traces of uh, Akhenaten and Atenism, so A was also included in this. I didn't read that yet. In they this... instigated a campaign of Damnatio Memori uh, Memoriae. Pretty much wipe him from history. Yeah, so he also kind of got caught up in that uh, whole Atenism thing, at least uh, for a part of his life, and so uh, others didn't really want uh, him to be remembered. Or old cave. I think he's a he would probably have to be a heretic of sorts, even if he, because he would have served about three different pharaohs, and in that time would have been Tutankhamun, and Smenkare. Yeah. And Nefer Nefer. 
Uh, and the one who also had arson in the center. I'm not even going to try. I don't have it in front of me. Uh, yeah, so so he probably was like the, the last one which he, we could put in the heretic tier. Because after that, uh, we kind of now fully get back to the old ways. And uh, basically it was Horem Heb who began this... Uh, campaign of re restoring the old gods and uh, removing uh, atomism. So... Oh. Oh, nice. Uh, new, new follower. So, uh, thank you for that. Uh, but yeah, now, now we are moving to Horemheb and uh, he was an important general. And uh, in the late 1300s BC, after A, he... Um, uh, he uh, took the throne and began uh, the elimination of atomism and all its traces and so uh, brought back the worshipping of the old Egyptian gods. So he basically brought back all the, the old or order. So that, that, that was pretty, you know, it's a pretty important thing. Yeah, he pretty much erased any and all existence of Akhenaten himself and he's got some decent little statues of himself uh, he is believed to have been a commoner uh, potentially even a scribe at some point who arose to power from the bottom which is pretty considering the period Oh, no, no, I can't say that it's not entirely out of place was it Sargon who was a cupbearer Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so he would have worked his way from the bottom to the top. Imagine that. And then he erased everything that came before. Alright, so I can't fault him. He's even got a big old statue of himself with Amun beside him. Yeah, he yeah. Pretty so, so, you know, I, a... I, I, th I think he was pretty, pretty, pretty great because, you know, first of all, just uh, this whole rising up from, like, civilian and military positions up to the throne, so that was already, you know, quite uh, uncommon, but also the fact that, you know, he re restored the old gods, so that's, you know, some, someone had to do that, but this is the pharaoh who did it, so that's an uh, important achievement. He crawled his way from the bottom to the top, but he couldn't crawl to the top of the tier list. He's only gotten as far as great, and I think that's rather fitting. Yeah, but still, still a very, uh, you know, very, very Good impressive. Turned great, absolutely. All right, you know, and with was, that, it was still needed for Egypt. So uh, he was, he was a, a pharaoh that the kingdom really needed at the time to stabilize the situation. Indeed. Now, this next one, we move on to the 19th dynasty. Yeah. This, this is a very important dynasty, and probably more than likely my favourite, because the greatest pharaoh of all time is in this in this area. We will come to him, and I will froth when we get to him. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting, yeah. So now we, we move to the 19th dynasty, and this is the dynasty where we have a few Ramesses, which will become quite a popular name for the Egyptian pharaohs. So first of all, we of course start with uh, Ramesses the first, uh, but he only ruled for only a, cu a couple of years, and uh, he wasn't really that uh, that important, uh, at least from what I know. Yeah, his mark, his brief reign mainly served to mark the transition between the reign of Horemheb and the rule of the powerful pharaohs of his own dynasty. Uh, in particular, his son Seti I and his grandson, who we will come to when I'll froth when we get there. Um, he, what did he do? What did Ramses I do that got everyone else going? Yeah, we'll name uh, we'll name ourselves after him. <laughs> Or at least they named themselves after one of the Ramses. Well, um... I'm not reading a whole lot interesting about him. He just had a very brief and short reign. Just two years, if that. Yeah, he just basically established the 19th dynasty and that was, that was kind of the end of it. 
Well, that's sad. All right, Ramsey's the first. That's that'll do, I think. He's uh, a bit mediocre. Bit uh under. Yeah. Bit underwhelming, to be completely honest. Yeah, you know, you can't really do that much if you only rule for uh, a couple years. So, uh, not, not, not yeah. really sure why I'm um, trying to read now. Uh, probably because of his age, because he already gained the throne when he was quite old, so didn't really have all that much time left. Yeah, he was of non-royal birth too, he only succeeded Horemheb due to Horemheb's lack of an heir. Ah oh, well, sad, a bit quiet, but that's alright. Who have we got next? Also now we have uh, his son, Seti the First. And he ruled for uh, about 10 years, possibly even 15, so a bit longer, and he did some uh, did some more stuff. Uh, he built some, some temples, some... Uh, some he's a heretic. I'm sorry, he's heretic to you. Well, well, his name... Well, he's upset the god of chaos of the desert. Well, but I mean, that's just me trying no, to justify but... that he was, named, so he was named after an evil god. But, no, no, Seth, Seth isn't an evil god. He, I mean, he he is in some stories, but in some others, he is, uh, you know, a pretty, uh, pretty good god, you could say. Stop defending the ant eater. I mean, he... stop that. I mean, uh, I read the mythology, so I I, th I think I know what I'm, <laughs> what I'm talking about. You know, he... Unbelievable. He... He's best friends with Apep, and no, you no, dare. He... Seth is the one who, who kills Apep. Yeah. Oh, ironic. He, he, there's, oh. There are stories about how there's that boat traveling through the underworld, and Apep is trying to attack it, but Seth is the guardian who basically has his huge spear, and he... Uh, kills Apex to allow the passengers to pass through the underworld without being eaten. So he, you know, he can do some good, good too. And uh, he's definitely like not in the tier as Apex. He's more like a, you know, like a sort of gr gray god who can do some good stuff, who can do some bad. But you know, he, he has his moments. I can't believe I am in a stream with someone who was defending Set. I can't believe it. No, that that's all. We're not gonna. We're not even gonna touch it again. No, because we'll just have to agree to disagree. You heretic. I mean, I, that being uh, said, though, I mean, I mean you, just, you just basically admitted that you don't, don't, didn't read an, enough mythology, so uh, you, you don't. Yeah, well, the ancient Egyptians were also wrong. <laughs> well, you know that's that sounds like your problem. Oh, it is my problem. I'm mad now. <laughs> um, that being said, Seti the First did have a very, very important rule. A lot of military campaigns again. Probably what inspired his son to be. Um, like he led a lot of uh, armies into, or at least had led many campaigns into Canaan, um, especially with the capture of Kadesh, which his greatest foreign policy was the capture of the Syrian town of Kadesh. Uh, from the Hittite Empire, this would be a running theme that we will see in a few in a few minutes to come. Uh, and he had a very well preserved tomb. Yes, I, think I can't I, fault it. I think he's uh, at least fine because he he did some some campaigning, he did some building. It's so just still continuing the re restoration of the. Kingdom after all that uh, chaotic period before the Amana period. Yeah, I think fine is fitting. Fine will do. Yep. Um. So so now we we move to his son, who is of course uh, Ramses the second, also known as Ramses the, the Great. And he's Ozymandias. Yes. This 
this is the pharaoh this is the dude the man himself the great the third pharaoh of the 19th dynasty of egypt regarded as the greatest often regarded as the greatest most celebrated and most powerful pharaoh of the new kingdom if not the greatest pharaoh in all ancient egyptian history to me he is this this guy at age 14 appointed prince regent by his father seti the first then went on to have one of the longest reigns in ancient egyptian history and in, where ge- he died. in general basically in all of human history yeah from all the monarchs absolutely just not just ancient egyptian history yeah he probably had the and has had the longest reign of monarchs and it, it's incredible he died at the age of 90 or 91 more than likely after he became prince regent at 14 like that's that's just a pop that's just the tip of the iceberg with this guy oh between many countless campaigns and battles against sea pirates campaigns into syria the well-known and famous battle of kadesh which he was there for and he led the peace treaty with the hittites campaigns into nubia and to libya his his activities in architecture building and monuments was incredible unrivaled and he pretty much set the he set the bar it's quite possible that the the ramses we see in in the bible in oh, um uh, in exodus was more than likely ramses the second I, I i love this guy this is the pharaoh to be oh he, he's obviously as milson was pointed out he's going to go into magnificent here and that's no doubt about that but we we can't just put him there without explaining why he deserves to be there why he deserves to be in a tier of his own yeah oh yeah. and basically during his reign here uh there, there were some important developments in the levant where he first uh, fought the hittites and uh, you know there was that battle of kadesh you know one of the most important battles or at least most known battles of the bronze age uh, which resulted in the peace treaty at least the first peace treaty that we know of that has uh, versions for both sides so one egyptian version and one hittite version so that was an also in very important historical moment uh, and uh, you know this was a pretty important treaty which also resulted in a a sort of alliance between uh, Egypt and uh, the Hittites ending their uh, almost century-long uh, rivalry. So now Egypt basically came to another very important and large ally. And so the Levantine front was stabilized and uh, secured from uh, you know, possible attacks from the north. So that, that was uh, again also a very important uh, accomplishment. We, we could talk about him for hours as well. Same deal as Akhenaten, except the complete opposite yeah. of Akhenaten. He's on the other side of the tier list. This was... Ramses is the king to beat. If anything, he should be at the top of the Magnificent tier. Well earned. What a great guy. God, I love him. Yeah. You know, and he he ruled for like, like 66 years, so very long time, up to being like uh, 90 years old, so probably one of the longest living uh, people at the time. Uh, oh, absolutely. He, had, he would have had to have fantastic health, considering so many of the pharaohs that came before were deformed with bump legs and inbred to hell. This guy would have had to have been in incredible health. Yeah, and basically he had those uh, many sad festivals which were hosted after uh, 30 years and then uh, basically every three, three years. So he had like 
uh, 13 or 14 of these, even though most pharaohs uh, often don't even have a single one, so having so many such festivals is like you know, very important. And uh, they, they, the pharaohs have to show their strength and uh, basically how physically fit they are, so apparently Ramses uh, showed that uh, in every festival, even when he was like you know, very old, so even then he was quite uh, quite in a good shape. The mere thought, ju- the, the thought just hit me of, you imagine you've lived and died in the lifetime of the pharaoh, and so that would have been so many people in this period. So many. Um, just you would have lived and died as a as a servant. You would have seen the life of him just go before your eyes because the life expectancy was nowhere near like ninety at yeah, all it was in this like, period. Probably like surviving past uh, like sixty was pretty impressive. So um, yeah. well, most uh, most probably couldn't outlive him. Oh, it's phenomenal! It's incredible to think about and. That being said, do you imagine the festival to his to his death? I say festival, it probably would have been the saddest thing all of Egypt could have could have ever experienced. It would have sent a shockwave across the entirety of the country. Yeah, and, and the the entirety of the known uh, world at that point, basically, because he was. Known in like uh, the Hittite kingdom and, and uh, Syria, Babylonia, and everywhere, so it was probably an international event at that point. It really would be a shame to just leave him as a footnote and shove him straight into Magnificent without talking about his achievements. This, this was the he is without a doubt one of, if not the greatest pharaohs in. In Pharaoh in ancient Egypt. Well earned, magnificent tier. Thank you for your service. I salute you. Yep. And uh, he also had like quite a lot of children, like up to a hundred, like 50 sons and 50 daughters. So he he had a very long, uh, long list of successors. Uh, Eventually, one of them would get to be a. One of them would get to rule eventually, though, considering his long life, they would have already been pretty old when they got to take the yeah. throne. And you know, now we have we have like uh, a bit of a problem when uh, you know we have such a long uh, reign. That means most of the successors uh, can age out and also become very old, and uh, so their reigns can't can't last that long. And also, you have like. Quite a lot of them, so there's uh, lots of competition to become the new successor, and uh, as we will see, that will that will cause some some problems in the in the future. And uh, also, I, uh, another important note that Ramses II he died in 1213 BC BC, and uh, by that point, uh, at least you know most historians say that the Bronze Age collapse. Uh, had begun, and uh, the Mycenaean uh, uh, state and the Hittites we were already starting to feel the effects. And even the first uh, sea peoples were arriving in Egypt, and uh, so Ramses was fighting them. So uh, this this will prove to be quite a challenging time for for Egypt as the all these calamities were coming onto it, and uh, now it uh, it's, it will not have very strong leaders as any of them will be quite old and uh, there won't be like one uh, a strong successor who could deal with this crisis. So yes, yeah, so uh, the first of these successors is Merenapta Mer-Nap- who is uh, the 13th son of Ramses. And uh, he he only ruled for around ten years, uh, which even then probably was quite a lot for him because he was probably very old even at the start of his reign, so probably couldn't really rule that long. Uh, That's funny. He was the thirteenth son of Ramses the second, 
and he only came to power because all of his older brothers had died. Hmm. <laughs> God, that's... It was probably around 70 when he ruled, when he got to assume rule. Can you imagine just holding on to any chance of getting to rule, holding on to life, hoping your father would die eventually, so that you could rule for like 10 years? Yeah, yeah, so, so like I said, this, this, this really caused some problems because now all of the successors just sort of are very old and so they're gonna die out really soon and so you will have to have this sort of succession crisis period where no one can hold power for more than a few years. Yeah, it's hard, it's hard to follow up on that, isn't it? It's really hard to follow up on on Ramses. It's just funny that he outlived so many of his heirs and that it would be Meneptah who would get to uh who would get to take position. What did he do though? I mean he defended against like... the the invading uh, sea peoples who uh, they were already starting their campaigns during Ramses' time and he he uh, uh, took care of them pretty well, but now they, they're still continuing their attacks, so Merenepta was the second pharaoh to, uh, you know, defend against them and uh, maintain the security of Egypt. An inscription on the Athribus Stele, now in the Garden of Cairo Museum, declares, His Majesty was enraged at their report like a lion, assembled his court and gave a rousing speech. This was in regards to our finding out that there was a news of an attack of the sea people. He just got very mad in his court. Like, I can appreciate that. He brought together the nine bows, abandoned baggage. He pretty much sent out a big old army to fight against him. I haven't heard much about Maneptar being the one who was well known for fighting the sea people, that's usually accredited to Ramses the Third. Yeah, but he he also did did uh, my, I mean I thought there was like at least one of uh, one attack which was during his reign around like twelve ten I think, and so he he was the one leading the defense of Egypt. Yeah. So, where would we even put him? Uh, so, so I, I would say that it's it's fine because you know he he still kind of maintained Egypt and uh, you know uh, defended it against uh, invading forces. Yeah, he's a bit fine. So you know he 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 still did, did uh, as much as he, as he could during his uh, limited uh, uh, limited reign. Yeah, fine, might have to do. All real fascinating, all that interesting. Uh, so now we have uh, Amen Mess, or uh, Amon Messis, as he's written in the tier list. And uh, now this is quite interesting because he could have been an usurper to the throne. Uh, and he, he is. Yeah, he, in his father was Merneptah, but he could have usurped the throne from uh, uh, Seti the second, so there was some conflict between them. Mm, little is known about him. He only ruled for a few years. A um, bit of a usurper, more than likely, stole the throne. My goodness. I have to say who his family was. This guy really ain't given me much to work with. I'm not really sure he was a good pharaoh. It, it, we, this, we don't know much about him. He was probably a usurper. He had a short reign. And... Seti II raised most of his information about him. No mention of him was spared. Yeah, so it's, it was basically just a contest between his two brothers, uh, Seti II and uh, Amenemes, both uh, sons of Merneptah, and so they were 
contesting uh, the throne for themselves, but uh, at the end we basically both died at a similar time around like 1198, uh, 1197, and uh, yeah, we, we didn't really do much. We just fought against each other in the end. Both died. No one. No, no one of them really got the throne, and uh, you know nothing really happened of it. And you know it was not really a, a great time to start the succession crisis because you know the the whole world was collapsing uh, around them, and so during this period Egypt really could have used like a a strong uh, pharaoh instead of just uh, a few. Uh, a couple different ones who were fighting each other instead of concentrating on defending their country. So uh, I would say, yeah, that, that's bad. You know, that's not 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 really great. No, no, definitely not. That's not admirable whatsoever. Right? To make him bad or terrible or pathetic? I mean, I've, I'd say it's probably. I know, probably terrible. It's terrible, yeah, that works. And Wouldn't mind filling out the terrible tier. You no, know, and, and you know now about his brother, said the second. So, you know, he, I mean, he he basically did the same, just trying to also get the throne. Uh, and he kind of ruled at the same time because both of them were kind of the pharaoh at the same time. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and we're looking at Seti the second then. Also a relatively short reign. He had to deal with many serious plots, most significantly the accession of MNS, who's possibly his half brother. Competed for the throne. What did he do during his reign? He didn't really do much because he just was uh, fighting his brother for the for the throne and just spending all this time just uh, in this succession crisis, not really having much time or uh, many resources to uh, do anything outside of that. Expanded copper mining in a in Edom. That's um. That's something. <laughs> not really. He had two wives. Oh, well, he had a number of wives, but we know of uh, Tust, uh, Twosret and Takhat. Twosret would re rule as regent for Siptar and later as pharaoh. Look, this guy's not very captivating, is he? I mean, yeah, it just, it just depends on... Uh... You know, if uh, he probably couldn't really have done that much else, because if his brother was trying to take the throne from him, so he can't really focus on anything else in that case. But still, still it was not not uh, not great that he he was focusing on this uh, civil war and so couldn't really do anything else. Yes. Oh dear. God. He's... I'd nearly say pathetic. You mean I guess... That's it, just petty. It, you know, he was just being petty. I mean, he's he's probably at the same tier as his brother, so they're, they're both like... They're both terrible. Go and get the say, same, same uh, tier. Um, so now, so now, so we would. Oh wait. Uh, okay, so it's first uh, his son, or his brother's son. Uh, it's hard to say, uh, but uh, it's uh, Septa, or Meremptah Septa, was. Uh, uh, he was Seti's son, or possibly Amenmes' son, uh, but. In any case, he only ruled for a few years, and uh, you know, again, didn't really do all that much. Uh, yeah, no, nothing, nothing really that special, and nothing that good. While 
while the whole world was uh, collapsing uh, around Egypt. So that was pretty disappointing rain as well. Mm. Indeed, it has a headless statue. A might of don't know who his father was. Oh, jeez, yeah, he's not giving us a uh, not inspiring much confidence either. Yeah, no, I don't like Siptar. I don't think he's he's not quite interesting either. He's very mediocre, if not irrelevant. Yeah, I'd say it's like bad. You reckon bad? Well, I reckon bad too. Yeah, I mean, I guess it just you know, you know, it's like one tier above the other two because he at least trained for like a few years longer, and if there wasn't a civil war going on, so there, at least there's that. But still, he couldn't really stabilize the situation, and it was still. And uh, the whole authority of the pharaohs was quickly collapsing as now people were just seeing the succession crisis and one pharaoh replacing the other and so kind of losing confidence in the, in the rulers and the country, which is, you know, it's pretty bad for the health of the state. Indeed. Uh, so now, now that would lead us to his... Um, to his mother, I guess, uh, who is uh, a divorcerate or a baustrate. Uh, yeah, and she was the wife of uh, Seti II and uh, possibly uh, Septa's mother, but again, that's, that's kind of complicated, we don't really know. And uh, she ruled for by herself only for a few years, but also possibly as a regent for Septa. Uh, for uh, uh, f for yeah, for his reign. Around this is uh, our third female pharaoh. Yeah, around uh, eleven ninety BC, which was uh, right around the time as the Mycenaean and uh, Greece uh, collapsed, and uh, yeah, that whole region was just uh, collapsing and uh, new. New sea peoples groups were arising and uh, beginning to attack, uh, like uh, Alashia, which is Cyprus, as well as the Levant, and eventually Egypt again as well. So, world's starting to collapse around them. Oh boy, this is we're nearing the end of the Bronze Age and the end of my knowledge. I feel a bit intimidated now. Yeah, so it's, it's not, not really a great time for Egypt and uh, even more so for the country surrounding it. Because it was, it was yeah, all, all, already losing control of, of, of its uh, Asian possessions as well as Kush in the south and just even Egypt uh, proper itself. Lower and upper Egypt, those were kind of falling out of control as well. So this last century was pretty, pretty difficult. Indeed, her reign ended in a civil war. It's documented in the Elephantine Stella of her successor, Setnakti. He became the founder of the 20th dynasty, but it's not known if she was overthrown by him or whether she died peacefully in her own reign. Uh, either way, her death pretty much signaled the end of the 19th dynasty. It was, uh, it seemed this was going into a very catastrophic time and a hard time to be an emperor, be a pharaoh. She doesn't seem very good, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, again, like, like the last previous ones, she didn't really do all that much and just, you know, this was just a very chaotic period where everyone was trying to gain the throne for themselves and she was basically just one of, one of them and uh, trying to gain the throne. Uh, by way of her son Septa, and so you know, after that, not really doing all that much. Yeah, yeah, she's. Oh, she's not interesting. She's not. And she bad? Was she a bad pharaoh? I mean, I'd say, I'd say even like almost terrible. 
Yeah, with the end of her reign ending more than likely either in Civil War or marking the beginning of Civil War and the beginning of the end of the fall of Egypt, yeah. at least during the collapse. Yeah, a bit yeah. terrible. Uh, so now, well, we, now we have uh, the 20th dynasty. Uh, another short-lived one. Well, it was about 100 years, so. uh, and it was the last dynasty yeah. of uh, New Kingdom. Despite it being a hundred years, they had a lot of rulers in this time. Most yeah, of them well, being named Ramses. Yeah, again, just continuing this trend of like short, short uh, rulers who lived and they ruled for only a very short period of time. And the first one was uh, uh, Satnacht, uh, who was a usurper, and uh, he replaced the, ten and the 19th dynasty with the 20th dynasty. But he himself also only ruled for like three or four years. There's possibly a usurper who seized the throne during a time of crisis and political unrest. Or he could have been a member of a minor line of the Remesid family, who emerged as Pharaoh. Either way, he sort of just came out of the woodwork, shoved himself into the position, and started naming his children, or at least he named one of his children, after Ramses the second, uh, but if I think he did like you know uh, a decent job because he kind of stabilized the situation, which you know, during the last like twenty years were just like these all these uh, successors of Ramses the second trying to gain the throne for them themselves, and so a Sefnacht basically just put an end to that line and uh, kind of at least for a little while stabilized the situation and. Uh, created his own uh, line which would be uh, at least a bit more stable so I guess there's there's that I'll give him that he was able to stabilize the political situation in Egypt considering how bad the situation he'd been put into was again so yeah I'll give him that I'd say he was fine he wasn't mediocre he was fine he did his job yeah so, yeah he didn't really rule for that long um yeah, his son did a very good job, though. Yeah, so now, so now so we are moving to Ramses III, who was, you know, what I would consider the last uh, great pharaoh of uh, the New Kingdom, because after that, it's kind of it's kinda goes downhill. But Ramses III, yeah. he was, you know, he was like the last one who actually did stuff, and he ruled for 30 years, and... Uh, you know, uh, in interestingly enough, uh, if if I may, I, I'll plug my novels here because uh, the divergence point in, vo in those novels, uh, you know, it's uh, in an alternate history novel series, The Bronze Horrors, uh, which I, I released uh, two books in, and basically the diver divergence point is starting right around uh, uh, 1185 BC, which is the start of Ramses III. Uh, Third's reign, so in that timeline he manages to stabilize the situation, and basically because of him, the uh, the Bronze Age collapse uh, doesn't happen. So, yeah, but uh, in in our timeline, uh, he he still did lots of great things, but ultimately that wasn't really enough to uh, avert the eventual collapse. Uh, but still, he did he did uh, definitely try and uh, do a lot of important stuff. He did a damn good job considering what he, the situation he was thrown into. This boy. Yeah, yeah, he, you know, he had like lots of battles both uh, on the sea and on land and uh, the Libyans in the west and the sea peoples in the north and uh, uh, for 30 years basically just battling them and up until his 60s, uh, trying to defend uh, Egypt, which probably without him would have collapsed uh, even earlier, like a few decades uh, earlier. So he managed to keep it going for uh, a little longer. Well, considering he ruled in a time of just complete, constant war, he did a pretty, pretty bloody good job. Economic turmoil there was conspiracy around his death as well, but oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. he so did a damn like, good job uh, with what he was given. Supposedly, there was uh, he was assassinated, 
by uh, some of his uh, successors. So uh, they kind of uh, cut his reign short, possibly, because he could have prob possibly ruled for even longer, but uh, he was ultimately assassinated in the 1150s. And uh, yeah, after that, it's like I said, it went downhill again. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Dur during during this time, uh, the Mycenaean Greece completely collapsed. Uh, the Hittite kingdom also collapsed. Uh, Alashia, which is Cyprus, uh, and most of the Levant as well, because Egypt was ultimately forced to re retreat and uh, uh, pull back just to African possessions. So during this time, they kind of retreated uh, and left the Levant to the Sea Peoples. Well, interestingly enough, the Phoenician cities managed to survive uh, and weren't destroyed. They managed to cut some deals with the Sea Peoples to leave them alone. But yeah, Egypt was just now only held the Egypt itself, uh, as we had to focus on uh, defending the core parts of the kingdom and so couldn't afford fighting in Asia as well. So he's going to go magnificent here, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, he he did the best that he could with what uh, situation he was given because, you know, it was, uh, you know, no one could have really uh, solved it uh, that well. Probably. Yeah, definitely not. He's deserving of his position, I reckon. He did pretty well. Yeah, yeah, you know, like like I said, it's like the, the last uh, great, uh, last of the pharaohs who like tried to preserve the uh, kingdom and uh, actually did some great stuff for it. And, Absolutely, uh, you know, this allowed Egypt to survive for so some decades more, as so all the other countries fell. Uh, and of course, like the pharaohs before him, kind of made the situation much more difficult because they were kind of destroying the country with their civil wars for like a, a few decades. So his starting position was already kind of uh, not that great. Yeah, absolutely. All right, I reckon magnificent here is well earned. Yeah, probably because you no, know, can't you can't really that much more. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, you know, and that's like I said, like I give him even more plot armor to uh, allow him to defeat the sea peoples uh, and so prevent the Bronze Age collapse, like in my novel series. But uh, here he still still did a, a great job. Uh, but yeah, now You're looking for a good read, make sure to check out the Bronze Horus. Follow the link in the description. Yeah, well, well these events were, aren't depicted there, they're just, uh, 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 just the, the starting point. So the people don't know that. If they buy the book, they'll find out themselves. Oh, yeah, well, well yeah, you can, you, can, you can check it out for yourself. But, uh, yeah, now we have the other Ramses, uh, 4 through 11, 11 yeah. And, Here we go. You know, I mean... There's just not, not that much to say about mo most of them, but, you know, we, we, we can go through them pretty quickly. Uh, you know, he had first Ramses the fourth. He ruled for, like, uh, six years. Uh, he was the son of Ramses, uh, Ramses the third, and, uh, you know, yeah, he didn't uh, really do that much. Yeah, no, this is a very uh, disappointing king. What do we know about him? He was aforementioned as a... He did a building activities. And... Despite his many endeavors for the gods and his prayer to Osiris, preserved on a year four stellar at Abydos, that thou shalt give me the great age with a long reign as my predecessor. The king did not live long enough to accomplish his ambitious goals. So, he had a short reign, disappointing death, he found his mummy. God is mediocre. Yeah, and like, We're gonna put all of the Ramses in mediocre, aren't we? Yeah, I mean... Uh, we'll, we'll see, yeah, but... Uh, yeah, Ramses the fourth. 
mediocre at best. Yeah, it was already like a decline, uh, a very quick decline of uh, Egypt after that. And yeah, yeah now we have yes, Sun Ramses the fifth. Uh, again, like four years, no, nothing uh, exceptional. Uh, oh, like apparently I heard that he was like the first uh, known uh, ruler who died of smallpox, as there was like a plague of it uh, around the time, you know, as along with all the other stuff that was happening. There was the plague and he caught it and he died a few years into his reign. Uh, so yeah, that, that didn't really help the situation. Oh dear. Some papyrus records, uh, some, a papyrus records a financial scandal during his reign that involved the priests of Elephantine. And a period of domestic instability also afflicted his reign, as evidenced by the fact that, according to another papyrus, the workmen of Deir el Medina periodically stopped work on his tomb in the king's first regnal year out of fear of, quote unquote, the enemy, presumably Libyan raiding parties who had reached the town of uh, Pernebit and burnt its people. It shows that the Egyptian state was having difficulties ensuring the security of its own elite tomb workers, let alone the general populace, during these very troubled times. God, he's, uh, life's getting hard. No one knows exactly how he died, but it was a yeah, slow, like, Yeah, like, like you said, break. it's, uh, there's uh, one theory that he caught uh, smallpox and so died of it, uh, along with many also other, pretty pathetic. many other Egyptians. All right, maybe I was wrong about all of the, uh, Ramses going into mediocre, because this one is pathetic. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I yeah. I want to put him in pathetic tier, man. Yeah, probably. I mean, I mean, it was already uh, declining, but now you know, even more so. You know, there just it just gets gets worse and worse over time. Oh boy. Yeah. So now we have Ramses VI, who is actually the son of Ramses the Third, and brother of Ramses the Fourth, and uncle of Ramses the Fifth. So. Uh, uh, I yeah. want, yeah, there better be a friggin' family tree about this. This is this is stupid. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, yeah, Ramses the sixth. Ah, uh, yeah. Again, um, didn't really do all that much. Just ruled for like uh, eight years. Um. Uh, in the first two years of his after his coronation, he did stop the frequent raids by the Libyan and Egyptian marauders in Upper Egypt and buried his predecessor in what is now an unknown tomb, uh, but it was in the Theban uh, necropolis. Um, what, save for what, wait, robberies. Okay, so. You know, he looked after his people, but Egypt lost its control of its last strongholds at Canaan around the time of his reign. And oh, yeah, though yeah, Egyptian so. occupation in Nubia had continued, the loss of the Asiatic territories had strained Egypt's weakening common, uh, economy and increased prices. Yes, we Life was like, getting hard. Yeah, the, the economy was like totally collapsing as it was like... The, the world in the Bronze Age was like very interconnected, and so now with the loss of basically all its trading partners, now Egypt was really in a bad place, and so couldn't get the needed uh, materials and uh, other stuff, and so it was even more difficult to to keep the state going. I have found a quote that's immediately making me want to put him into pathetic tier, and it's that. Uh... He's, you know, the construction projects were increasingly hard to fund, and yet he managed to usurp the monuments of his forefathers by engraving his cartouches over theirs, uh, and he boasted of having covered all the land with great monuments in his name, built in honour of his fathers, the gods. And he was fond of cult statues of himself, more unknown to betray him than any 20th dynasty king after Ramses III. 
An Egyptologist has characterized him as a king who wished to pose as a great pharaoh in an age of unrest and decline. Imagine wanting to show yourself as some great and powerful figure despite, and have so many statues built of yourself. Yet, it, it's, it's like he's not even acknowledging anything bad's happening. He's just wanting to show himself being great and powerful. Yeah, yet. You, you know, it's like the like uh, dictators uh, having like a collapsing country and the collapsing economy and trying to maintain the the view that we're still like uh, making everything uh, everything work work well even though it's like uh, their uh, rule just caused the country to become even in a worse situation exactly oh boy god he everything went downhill during his reign from the economy the like the economy just declines the dilution of power was all over the place <sighs> he's pathetic yeah no doubt about yeah, it yeah yeah uh so now we have ramsey seven who is uh ramsey six uh, son uh yeah and uh Again, like seven years, so that's like the the, the standard for these Ramses after the third, like uh, seven years, like the the average. So nothing, nothing. They could too barely special. handle a portion of Ramses the Second's power. It's it was like all of these pharaohs combined, they still like rule for uh, you know a, a, sh a shorter period of time than like Ramses the Second. Yeah. It's just there's very little known about this this guy's reign, other than the it was during a period of turmoil and grain prices had soared, gone overboard. Here's yes, another king so that's it, it, very... it was like in a free fall already. It was like for fully collapsing, and uh, the, these guys didn't really help, help the situation. Definitely not. He's definitely, I can't say he's pathetic, he can't really help the situation, but he wasn't good. This is a bad pharaoh. He didn't do a great job considering how bad things were, and he didn't do a whole lot with her uh, in his lifetime that we know about. Yeah. Um, we haven't even found his mummy. That's, so, de that's depressing. So now we have Ramesses the Eighth, who was, uh, interestingly enough, uh, another son of Ramses the uh, third, and so uh, he must have been quite old by this point, and uh, that shows because he only ruled for one year. Um, so, uh, you know, can He's the most obscure ruler of this dynasty. Yeah. The current information from his Greek kingship suggests that he lasted on the throne for a year at most. God, this yeah. is depressing. So, so I mean, I, I would say it's like irrelevant, basically, because he he didn't even really rule for like only for like a very tiny period of time. Yep, that's an irrelevant pharaoh. Yeah, just 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 you know another another number in the Ramses line. Just uh, another number. So sure. now now we have Ramses the ninth and. Uh, he was now the grandson of Ramesses the third, uh, and his father was uh, a Monto here top chef, uh, who possibly appeared in my book uh, because I, I used this name, but I'm not now. I'm not sure if uh, I used exactly this figure or. Or uh, another one because this uh, this dynasty like features quite heavily in my novels, so these are quite important figures there. But uh, like in uh, in our timeline, these you know they didn't really do that much of an impressive job and uh, just continued continued the decline of Egypt. Yeah, he had ruled for eighteen years. Have a look at his projects. They're mostly building works centered on Sun Temple Center of Heliopolis in Lower Egypt. Um, here's another. Yeah, this is just another king who didn't do anything real. Uh, 
real impressive. Yeah. yeah. I mean, by, by, by this point, yeah, basically, no. the Bronze Age Collapse has uh, kind of, uh, he had ended by this point, kind of, and it was uh, in a period known as the, the Dark Ages, where, you know, yeah. where, where was these, most of the civilizations had collapsed, like Assyria had retreated, and uh, Babylonia had collapsed as well. Uh, pretty was, much most of the settlements yeah, yeah. and cities along the Canaanite coast were pretty much, or at least in the Levant, were either obliterated or... If you're the Phoenicians, you were lucky. Yeah, no, no, the Phoenicians a, came over pretty yeah, clean. Yeah, they, they kind of managed to yeah, probably get some deals and the so their cities were preserved which you know eventually allowed them to become uh, important players in the iron age but yeah now now we are actually entering the iron age uh, bronze was kind of being replaced by iron but egypt didn't really have any source of iron because it's a flat uh, plain and uh, so they would have to trade for these materials but since we have no trading partners so we can't really get anything and <laughs> do anything so it's kind of still in a very bad bad position. This would have been a desperate time of recycling, no doubt. Yeah, this isn't a very phenomenal pharaoh. I'm nearly tempted to say he, Ramses the Ninth, was also irrelevant. Because what else, what has he done? He had 18 years and he hasn't been able to do anything, considering the time period and all of the circumstances you've told us. He's, haven't, hasn't done a whole lot. I mean, he was known for having honoured his predecessors, including Ramses II, III, and VII. He paid close attention to Lower Egypt and built a substantial monument at Heliopolis. But he has done much else that's really impressive. Yeah, so... I don't know, I guess... Uh, I'm not really sure which tier, but like one of the uh, lower ones. Definitely not a good tier. He was... Uh, I'd go bad. It was a bad pharaoh. Yeah. It wasn't great. Yeah, I guess so. So now we have the penultimate pharaoh, Ramses the Tenth. And uh, uh, again, <laughs> using this opportunity to talk about my novels. But uh, this is the one which uh, at the start is the pharaoh of Egypt in the, in the, the first book, the, Mar the Rise of Kemet. So if if you want to ch check it out, be be sure to do that. But uh, you know, in the in that timeline, he is ruling a very prosperous and uh, large country. But here he inherits a pretty desperate and uh, you know crumbling uh, kingdom, which doesn't can't even really control its own population and so. Uh, you know he can't really do all that much here, and his re his reign only lasts like uh, four years, so yeah, not really all that notable. So poorly documented. Yep, this guy has got nothing. He's not is not not interesting. Nearly irrelevant. I'd say irrelevant. He's, he's we got nothing on him. Yeah, yeah. Could yeah. have reigned between 3 and 10. We don't know his origins at all. Yep. And so we move to Ramses XI, the final pharaoh of the New Kingdom, who ruled for 30 years uh, from 1107 to 1077 BC which is the date, the traditional date of the end of the New Kingdom. And uh, basically during the, his reign, the, well, Egypt, like, finally fully collapsed as there were rebellions and he tried putting them down, but in the end it didn't really work out. And, uh, you know, first you had these high priests of Amun in the south kind of breaking off, and then some other factions, and eventually just, you know, New Kingdom. Uh, died out uh, all these uh, different warlords taking their uh, their share of the country for themselves well yeah, interestingly enough there uh, you still had some uh, international dealings like uh, between Ramses XI and Assyria 
<laughs> where, where was this uh, funny exchange of Ramses eleven like sending a monkey and a crocodile to uh, to the Syrian king? Uh, so so uh, I mean that's uh, that's pretty funny thing. I think I made, made some some memes from my page about that event, but uh, yeah, yeah. madman. What a madman! Uh, even his burial was un unusual. We don't know how he died, but his tomb was being prepared for him in the Valley of the Kings, but it was left unfinished and only partly decorated um, since he had arranged to have himself buried away in Thebes instead possibly near Memphis. But um, he was the last ruler before Egypt had collapsed, as you'd pointed out. This is God. Oh, what he was not good. This wasn't a good pharaoh. I I can't say I can't speak very highly of him considering his circumstances. What are you thinking? Yeah, I mean, uh, well, at least he kind of ruled for at least a few uh, a bit longer, like thirty years, as opposed to his like predecessors. He had a few years, so at least there's that. But. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah, other than that, there is just, uh, they didn't really do that much, and they eventually yeah. led, led, to the, to, led to the collapse. Yeah, pathetic. I, I mean, I don't know about pathetic to you, it, it, would, it would suit, but he might also fit relatively well in one of the other low tiers. I think I mean, I'll leave I, this one. I'd say it's, it, it's, just, it's just bad, or... You know, I'm thinking between bad or terrible, something like. Uh, because yeah. yeah, like 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 I said, I think there was some uh, some re rebellions due to like the price of grain or something, and he like uh, suppressed them pretty pretty harshly, which led to the people being even more resentful of the pharaohs, and so finally being like the the final breaking point, which which led to the ultimate collapse. Uh, of Egypt, so I think I think that's pretty pretty terrible. Absolutely, yeah, terrible tier it is. Yeah, so now we are finished with the twentieth dynasty, and so the uh, the new kingdom. So, so I will... I think we could uh, do a a break now. Absolutely, I was about to suggest yeah, we're going on to the third intermediate period. We should have ourselves a quick break, a quick snack, run to the bathroom, make sure you guys can get some water, some little chippies or a snack. We yeah. can return to this soon. Yeah, I think like uh, up to 10 minutes. So yeah. 5 or 10, we'll see how you'll go. Alright, we'll be back soon. Yeah.
Right, so welcome back everyone. So uh, we uh, finished the New Kingdom and now we are moving on to the third intermediate period. And uh, <laughs> this is the one where basically uh, neither of us really knows that much about and you know, I mean basically no one really knows uh, much about these pharaohs because they weren't really all that important and uh, there were lots of them and lots of dynasties as you can see in this uh, map I have on the right. Uh, there. Uh, there were many different factions in Egypt at that time, and it was quite a complicated period with uh, different uh, dynasties ruling at the same time. So This is a complete unknown for me entirely, as Sobek has pointed out. I don't know what we're going into. Yeah, I mean, this I mean, is beyond I mean, my knowledge. Even I don't really know that much, just you have some very vague uh, ideas about what was happening, but it's still a pretty complicated period, so... Uh, yeah, but we will try to cover this and uh, the, like the four dynasties which were during this rule before Egypt was once again reunified, which that will we will leave for the next and uh, possibly final stream. Uh, but for now, let's uh, let's continue with uh, the intermediate period, and so we have the twenty-first dynasty, uh, which was. Uh, it was based at Tanis, uh, which uh, I'm not really sure where it is. I think it's like in. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, it's here in Eastern Delta. Uh, so where it's named like 22nd Dynasty, so it was basically 21st Dynasty at first. So we control like this small uh, uh, piece of land in uh, the Delta. And that's where we ruled from. Uh, it's probably safer to rule from there than it was anywhere else in Egypt at the time. Well, yeah, possibly. And uh, I mean, they possibly could have had like some more uh, lands at first, but you know, it uh, it changed over the decades. So mm. uh, the first ruler of this dynasty is uh, Smendis, uh, who was possibly linked to uh, Ramses the Eleventh uh, due. To uh, marrying his uh, daughter, um, uh, yeah, and so that, that's why he uh, he is kind of the official successor. But uh, you know, obviously, by this point, you have like many successors, uh, which we will get to in a bit. But for now, let's cover the twenty-first dynasty, uh, and uh, yes, Mendes he. Uh, well, he ruled for like 20 years, and uh, uh, he was one of the governors of Lower Egypt, which later allowed him to become a, a pharaoh. Well, you know, this title didn't really mean that much by this point, because uh, pharaohs were like many different pharaohs ruling at, the, at one point, so... Uh, you know, there's uh, nothing too special about this guy because he was only ruling a small portion of the country and uh, didn't really uh, didn't really improve his situation that much. I see a very mediocre pharaoh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm um, just. Uh, Continued that decline, but we, I mean, I guess the decline was already finished because you know, each was had like collapsed and so uh, uh, nothing more could really be done. Yep. I got nothing to say about yeah, this so, guy. So, I mean, I, I guess just. Uh, I mean, I guess either mediocre or just even irrelevant, maybe. But then, I mean, I'd give him irrelevant, considering, you know, he had quite a long reign and did nothing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, nothing special. Um, now we have uh, Amenem Miso, who ruled for only four years. <laughs> and yeah, that's, that's you know, not that much is written. Two, two paragraphs. This is going to be another irrelevant pharaoh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't even have an image of it, so just... No, just continuing to rule that uh, rump state in, uh, like, eastern Egypt, so... 
the only reason uh, we can confirm this pharaoh's existence is because a tomb of the tomb of his successor when it was discovered it had a gold bow cap inscribed with both Amenemnesu's royal name Nefakare and that of his successor uh, found in the tomb otherwise there was no evidence to prove that this pharaoh had yeah. lived at all yes so um uh... Uh, now we have Pseune, uh, 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 the, the first, uh, uh, and, sounds right. Yeah, and he, he been the rule for quite a long time, like 40-50 years, and, uh, uh, he was the son of the high priest of Amun, and uh, it's interesting because the high priest of Amun were their own faction, ruling in the south at the same time uh, so uh, this was possibly a time where uh, two different factions uh, in Egypt were ruled by the same dynasty uh, but I mean it didn't result in a unification so not not much good came out of it apparently uh, he has a very impressive gold burial mask I will admit Yeah, but I mean, uh, he, not much, not much was done. So no, no, wouldn't say really achieved anything. Uh, no, no, I don't think he achieved a whole lot. Yeah. Uh, oh, what does that rank him? Irrelevant. Wouldn't say bad. Yeah, I mean, I, was, I was he a bit pathetic? Would you say pathetic? I mean, I he didn't. Kind of see pathetic. I mean, just really did, didn't really do anything. So, I uh, wouldn't, wouldn't say that it's, it's really bad. But I, I guess just irrelevant again, maybe. Right, I'm happy with that. Another irrelevant pharaoh. Uh, now we have his son, uh, Amenemop. Uh, you know, this this was a pharaoh. This was a pharaoh. Yep, that's that's probably the most we could say about most of those like uh, third intermediate period pharaohs. So, and he he was he was a pharaoh. He ruled for a few years, and uh, that's that's about it. He claimed the title of high priest of Amun in Tanis, as his father did before him. And his authority was fully recognized at Thebes. Otherwise, he's a poorly attested ruler. Yeah, but you even, can, yeah, even then, it does really... Chapel. Yeah, we ain't got much to work with with this guy. Really, Another does, irrelevant um, pharaoh. Doesn't really give you much because, you know, like you can see in the map, you had, like, uh, the western uh, part of the delta being controlled by... Uh, chiefs of the West, so like uh, Libyans or uh, you know some uh, some uh, tribes from there, and as well as great chiefs of the Meshvesh, were one of the Sea peoples, so they also uh, settled in here. Uh, while in the south, you had the priests of Thebes, who controlled the Upper Egypt, as well as uh, some different uh, regional lords in uh, Heracleopolis and Hermopolis. Uh, while the dynasty, so the 21st dynasty was just a small little corner, so only, mm. uh, only a small portion of Egypt was ruled by them, so I mean, again, you know. I'm not really impressed. Yeah, so... Nah. These know. are all very depressing pharaohs. No one of yeah, you just know, note at all. You know, there, there is a reason why this is called the Dark Ages. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's pretty... indeed. Um, so now, now this is uh, quite interesting because you have uh, Osorkon the Elder, and he's the first Libyan uh, pharaoh. He's uh, he's the great chief of Neshvesh, so like probably started ruling from this. Uh, uh, this uh, 
point and uh, I guess possibly conquered uh, some some areas. It's it's hard to say. Uh, but yeah, this was the period when the Libyans were moving in and kind of taking control of uh, Egyptian territories. Another just uninteresting pharaoh. Otherwise, I mean, yeah, not 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 much was done. Uh... Are we gonna put him irrelevant too? Um, in a, I don't know. It's it's hard to say because uh, he kind of started a new, a new dynasty, I guess, from the, the Meshvesh tribe into. Uh, being one of the Egyptian uh, Egyptian lines, so at least at least he did that. But so uh, I don't know. I guess it would be at least uh, mediocre. Uh, yeah, give him mediocre. In my opinion. But yeah, after that, yeah, not, not much. Uh, so now we have CM one. Ah, Simon, how's it going, mate? Regarded as one of the most powerful rulers of the 21st dynasty. Okay, so he was probably powerful. Oh yeah, he ruled That's for, for uh, 20 years, so a bit longer than the average, average in that period. And... Uh, yeah. Let's see what he did. Uh, Apparently he's uh, mentioned in, a, or at least suggested that he is mentioned in the Bible, to being uh, connected to the Israel Israelites and the, their kings. So he could have mm. had some connections to the region. As, uh, during this time, the kingdom of uh, Israel emerged in Canaan, which was it had been abandoned by Egyptians during the Bronze Age collapse, and so now that became uh, part of the kingdom of Israel, Egypt. Uh, pretty close. They probably had some uh, some dealings with it. Hmm. So I mean, I I guess I guess this one was like fine because he you know he he ruled for a bit longer. He kind of you know at least maybe tried to uh, rebuild the country at least somewhat. And yeah. There was uh, there was an attempt. Plus, maybe you know, was possible connections to making uh, allies in uh, in Canaan, and so trying to establish Egypt on on the world stage once again. Yeah, we've got evidence on his seventeenth year of rule in an inscription. That's important paleographical development uh, because it's the first time in Egyptian recorded history that the word pharaoh was employed as a title and linked directly to a king's royal name. So that was used for Pharaoh Siam on here. Henceforth, references to Pharaoh Susenes the second, and Shoshank, and Ozorkon the first, and so forth. It just became commonplace. So that's uh, yeah. So prior to his reign and all throughout the Middle and New Kingdom, the word Pharaoh referred only to the office of the king. Now it's linked directly to their royal name. See, so that's interesting, and that's it. For me, this guy's not speaking to me. I guess he's fine. Cons yeah, I mean, like as you pointed out, he's fine. Yeah. Um. So now, uh, continuing on, we have uh, uh, Sassanis the second, who is again a, a son of uh, a high priest of Amon. Um. But yeah, we don't we don't really know that much. He, he has like quite a, I mean, some say he has fourteen years, uh, some say thirty five years uh, reign. So hard hard to say how how long he, exactly he was in power. Mm.
All right, so this guy's got a little bit more going for him at least. Like from what I'm catching up on, he was both King Atanas and High Priest in Thebes at the same time, meaning he did not resign his office as High Priest of Amun during his reign. I have thought I read somewhere he was, uh... Nope, I misread. He was not a warrior. Probably won't see a warrior king for a while <laughs> yet. Um, I mean, I don't know, I guess just mediocre. Didn't really do that much. And uh, another mediocre one. Uh, okay, so now we have the uh, Theban High Priest, but they're they are not um, uh, in this tier list, so just they were, you know, uh, a group of priests who were uh, in control of the south of uh, Upper Egypt. But they kind of did their own thing, and so uh, weren't really uh, important to the main uh, line of pharaohs. Yeah, see, there are quite a few of them. Uh, so now we have the 22nd dynasty, and there we have the Libyans, who, like I said, we already moved, had moved in into Egypt, but now we uh, expanded their uh, rule, and so, uh, uh, you know, we had uh, quite a bit more uh, uh, power. So the first one is uh, Shoshank the first. Um, who... I think I've seen this movie. The Shoshank um, Redemption. <laughs> yeah. That's the funniest thing I'll say all night. Alright, what can yeah. we learn about him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so these Libyans, we had quite a lot of uh, Shoshanks. Um, it was an important name to them. Uh, But yeah, uh, it's, it's hard to say something about this one. Because uh, I read with uh, like the Libyans of the uh, 22nd dynasty or somewhere around that we managed to, at least for a short while, uh, reunify uh, parts of Egypt, but uh, that kind of didn't really work out and it collapsed pretty quickly once again so uh, that didn't really work out them no origins and family and a foreign policy he pursued an aggressive foreign policy in the adjacent territories of the middle east towards the end of his reign it's attested in part by the discovery of a statue base bearing his name from the lebanese city of biblos part of a monumental stella from megiddo bearing his name a list of cities in the region comprising Syria, Philistia, Phoenicia, the Negev, and the Kingdom of Israel. Okay, he was pretty hardcore and is getting monuments out in, our, in his foreign policy out there. Um, there's a few issues, however, that arise as him being uh, seen as the same as the biblical Shishak. Uh, the pharaoh in... Oh, I just read that, now I've lost it. He was seen as the biblical Shishak from, uh, referred to in the Hebrew Bible at 1 Kings. And that's uh, that's interesting, but it, the history kind of get, yeah. gets a bit muddy there. I mean, I, I guess he was fine. He tried to, tried to do something and, uh, you know, at least uh, somewhat... Uh bring uh, back uh, some stability to Egypt. Indeed. I guess it, it's it's fine. It'll do. He's fine. Yeah. Uh, and now, now I noticed that it's actually in the tier list. I didn't really arrange it like completely chronologically because you have like uh, three dynasties at the same time. And so uh, these are uh, arranged by dynasties and not by like complete chronology so the 23rd dynasty is actually ruling at the same time as uh, the 22nd libyan one so uh, now that we have uh, around like 900 bc we have uh, the 23rd dynasty like here as you can see and like the 22nd like in some different places but they, they like fought and these uh, territories changed but like 
uh, they kind of ruled that uh, at the same time just different different uh, territories. But uh, still, let, let's uh, let's first just go through that twenty second, and then we'll move to the twenty third. Uh, Sounds good. So and we will be doing it with the company of SBNT, who has finally well, joined hello. us. Welcome back. Hello, gentlemen. I was uh, had a had a long, brutal day of game dev, and uh, yep, um, finally managed to take enough of a shower and have enough paracetamol to to show up to the stream. How is everyone? Yeah, we, we're we, doing well. We did that quite quite a lot. We finished the the new kingdom, so yeah. it was it was. I'm quite taking a look at this tier list. It's huge. Is this a whole new document? Like, has the tier list been emptied and then? No, no, no. Just... This is the same tier. It's actually, the same one. Oh yeah, no. Joser is there. We have. Yeah, the... yeah, we, we, um, uh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, it was it's the old same, tier? so I yeah. just added new ones. Fair, fair. You no, know, it makes sense. It looks better with all of them in the same tier list. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Look at us go. If we only there were all the favorites. Oh yeah, twenty third, huh? Well, what what were the biggest names that I missed? Uh, Akhenaten. Oh. oh my god, Akhenaten, Akhenaten. heretic, huh? <laughs> yep. yep, heretic tier. Who'd have seen that coming? Uh, Ramsey's <laughs> the second. He was uh, probably one of the one of the big well-known ones and then all of the other ramses that followed in his way uh, um setis that the setis horam heb uh tutankhamun or tutankhamun uh, yeah we had a few the thutmoses yeah. and Shepsut. Oof. <laughs> those are some big names yep, i mean we're we're literally it's figuratively yep we're on to the uh we're on to the nobodies now during the dark oh, we're ages. Back, back to a period, anything. another intermediate period with squabbling dynasties across the place. Yeah, and then now we have like oh, uh, wonderful three, three different dynasties at the same time. Just uh, now, here, up for Libyan. Yeah, we're now having the, the 22nd one, which is the Libyan kings who uh, controlled like parts of uh, northern Egypt. So we're now dealing with them. Fair. Wonderful. Osurkun affairs, huh? Yes, yeah, so yeah. now we have, uh, uh, following, following the Shoshank first, we have uh, Osurkun the first, who continued the uh, Libyan dynasty in the north. And, uh, uh, yeah. Did it say he managed to stretch to the Levant? He managed to grab maybe a few acres all the way up in the near east yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. territory included much of the levant too yeah that is the campaign against the philistines and the kingdom of israel oh no no that was his oh his father died campaigns against the philistines okay That's no he did a lot of temple work uh yeah, you yeah, got a distinguished long reign back. as well. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, that's pretty long. He's yeah, fine. He, he also though. founded like a stronghold in Egypt, like, um, like somewhere in the north, but it was uh, lost uh, sometime after. So, yeah, he 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 did some he did some things. He 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 was busy. Uh, He's yeah, fine. I, yeah, I, I can't give him anything else. Yeah. Uh, so now after that we have Shoshank the second, uh, but he only ruled for two years and he was apparently a usurper. But, uh, uh, so, uh, so it wasn't much of a Shoshank redemption, was it? <laughs> oh god, you got, I already I'm made so the joke. Yeah, yeah. Already made, oh my god. <laughs> already made the joke, you're late to that one. <laughs> oh <Yeah>. man. <laughs> Oh, well, at least somebody redeemed the Shoshanks. It's all right. We made that joke back in Shoshank 1. <laughs> what was that, two centuries ago? Um, A few decades ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. A few decades. Um, okay, so he's... 
He was the ruler whose tomb was. He was the only ruler whose tomb was not plundered by tomb robbers. That's nice. I mean, that just I says that it's just so unimportant that no one wants to, no one wants to take take anything from it. Or maybe he's such a such a good pharaoh that even the old that Sobek himself is protecting it. You, you know, I kind of kind of doubt that. If okay, if, fair. He just probably like. Uh, there's like nothing for him, so no one even bothers to loot the tomb. Yeah, oh. he's got an enig enigmatic identity. We can't quite figure out who he is, where he came from. Oh god, I, I this is a very irrelevant, can, uh, irre irrelevant. We don't even really know uh, anything about him. I uh, bet Egypt Egyptologists go like fight each other over stuff like this. <laughs> Yeah, there probably probably are some uh, discussions about who uh, who is uh, who are all these uh, unknown pharaohs. Yeah, yeah, who is the true Shoshank? So now we have a uh, Shoshank to B, but that's like an even more obscure pharaoh, so it's not even included in the tier list. Uh, so now we are moving on to Har C S or Har C S Merimun A. So. It's like we even have now not only like first or second, but just A or B for some reason. But yeah, it's um, we don't really know much about him as well. Yeah, this is another irrelevant pharaoh. Let's just throw him in an irrelevant and move on. Yeah, I think that we had like Nothing that very else. very short period of uh, so Libyan pharaohs doing something, but now it's again like it's not really important ones. Uh, so now we have Takalot the first, who is the son of um, uh, Sorkon the first, just a few pharaohs ago, uh -huh. and uh, he ruled for like uh, like uh, eight years, uh, no, seven years, something like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, but uh, again, no, no, not not much, not much to say about him. Ah, uh, well. We are in like wait so thirteen years according to Menetho. Okay, well, I'll ignore that. But yeah, this one must be another super irrelevant time. These guys don't seem to be up to much, or at yep, least not seem to be surviving. Yeah. Yep. This okay. is another relevant. Yeah, so I guess we can throw him. Ah, uh, now we have Osorkon the second. Uh, uh, this one seems to have done like a bit more. He ruled for like I mean, for forty-five um, may, years. May I retract my statement on saying that Takalot the the first was irrelevant? I would like to change it to pathetic. And, uh, uh, why is, why is that? that? So Takalot the first authority was not fully recognized in Upper Egypt, and another local Theban king. Uh, challenged his power there. Uh, several null te uh, level texts at Thebes mentioned two sons. Uh, yeah, mentioned two sons, which was probably him. Uh, look, long story short, from what I'm reading about this, the pro there was a dispute in royal succession following a sork on the first yeah, death. Yeah, but, but like it's Seriously you know it's pairs. like the intermediate period, so like uh, none of them like are, none of them are like fully recognized, so you know. Uh, none of well, this them. guy's particularly pathetic, just to me. We can keep him in irrelevant if you'd like. But that's yeah, I mean, just it's sad. Just nothing, nothing too special. It, uh, all of them are kind of similar at this at this point. Um, yeah. Unbelievable! We're just going to fill up the irrelevant tier with all of these nobody pharaohs. Well, well possibly, but uh, Osorkun the second, he, I think he he kind of did a bit more stuff. Uh, I know mm. he he was um, did some campaigning in uh, in Israel and uh, Syria, try to kind of recover that Egyptian sphere in Asia. As now, the Neo Assyrian Empire was rising, like around the 800 BC. So he was kind of competing with them uh, in uh, in the Levant. Yeah, true. That makes sense. We are coming up to the point where the uh, the Assyrians start making a show in Egyptian history, right? The Neo Assyrian. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, they kind of recovered and so are expanding once again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. I think we should, probably shouldn't put him fully irrelevant if he's kind of competing at uh, this, like, geopolitical level. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say so. And he also probably did some, uh, some unifying of Egypt in the north and so established a larger larger kingdom than his predecessors so you know it's it, it's something uh yeah, yeah. Something. that's something I, I, you like the ambition and the effort uh okay so now we have uh... oh, okay so now it's interesting because now it splits uh, this dynasty splits into two parts and uh, one is continuing the line from uh, osorkan the second in the, as the 22nd dynasty, and now there's the 23rd dynasty, uh, which uh, splits off and does its own thing, so they're kind of both at the same time. Uh, so we can take Shoshank the third from the 22nd dynasty, who, you know, you can see didn't really do anything despite okay. ruling for uh, 40 years. Well, he did marry his aunt. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Very good, <laughs> as you do. And well, he outlived his first five sons. Uh, oh. was succeeded by his sixth son, who he also yeah. named Toshank, who later died childless. Mm. Yeah. So this guy's definitely a lot more interesting than some of his... Um... <laughs> uh, yeah, we've actually got a little bit on him. Yeah, and it's pretty entertaining. It's like Game of Thrones with this guy. Marry my aunt, son is dead. <laughs> yeah, what are you, you going to do about it? <laughs> he's no, 60. He's still, he's still, even with that, he's a bit pathetic. Yeah. And he's, he's still irrelevant. Yeah. He's had 39 years rule, so he yeah. had a yeah. long life, but he didn't do yeah, anything. Yeah, he did nothing in 39 years. That's pretty rough. Yeah, it's I'd say it's bad, like pathetic tier because, uh, you know, it's just such long reign and still... And yeah, nothing, yeah. nothing really to show for it, so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at least from what we know, but uh, no, it doesn't really look yeah. like there was anything good going on. Mm -hmm. uh, as that, you know, by this point, kind of that Libyan uh, empire kind of collapsed, and so it went back to being just a small, small states in uh, northern Egypt. Uh, so now we can see his son. Shoshank the fourth. Uh, you know what do we know about him? Hmm. Literally sweet FA. <laughs> this guy is not interesting either. Oh <laughs> god, just looking at his Wikipedia page makes me just want to have a nap. I'm sorry, he's irrelevant. Let's just move yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. Um, now, we have, the... now we have Pami, Pami Meriamun, uh, like a very short, uh, short yeah. training ruler. Uh, this is the seventh son of Shoshank the third. Yeah. So. He, yeah. Uh, his reigns. name means the cat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that probably means he's better than pathetic, right? <laughs> with a name like Palmy, um, yeah, nah, look, with a name like Palmy, in Australia, that's a, that's a nice bit of crispy chicken with a bit of sauce on top, but, uh, <laughs> it is, <laughs> look, I, this guy ain't really speaking to me otherwise, like, being called the cat is an interesting, Interesting title, all things considered. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, fair. Pathetic or irrelevant? I think that's that's what <laughs> we'll have to make the decision. Uh, I think uh, just uh, no kind of irrelevant. Didn't really do much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one of our, one of your commenters has said uh, you put my boy Ramsey as mediocre. That ain't cool, man. Now what? We'll, which one? I think we'd like to, uh, yeah. First, we'd like to clarify one. 
which Ramses, and two, <laughs> if he's there, it's probably because he's not one of the great Ramses. Yeah, I, I think it's about the first one, and uh, I mean, I yeah. we just we, we just decided because uh, he didn't really rule for that long, like maybe. Well, what was it like two years? So just he didn't really, couldn't really have done that much in that period of time. So you know, just can't can't really give a much higher grade when I have such a short reign. Yeah, you haven't really contributed much to history if you had such a short reign. Ramses the second, however, well deserved position in the magnificent tier. Yeah, yeah, and the third one as well. And Ramses the third. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, which show? Okay, which show shank are we up to? Oh, show shank five. I uh, was right. I hate that I was right. I'm, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you it's... guys are running on fumes, are you? <laughs> show shank yep, four. It's... Show shank's twenty seven. Show yep. shank ninety nine. <laughs> We're still <laughs> continuing with them. Uh, so... Oh, I hate them already. <laughs> <laughs> they do seem to suck. <laughs> it was a long reign of 38 years, though. He left a fair yeah. amount of attestation, so little is known about yeah. his life, though. Really um, his realm oh, underwent an unstoppable yeah. shrinking. Uh, I think brand new celebrities were starting brand new. Oops. Uh, status an anonymous year in 38 donation Stella. Okay. Yeah, so basically, he kind of just like that kingdom just completely collapsed, and he was left with like just, uh, two cities and like surrounding areas, and that's it. Oh, good, good. He's going in the pathetic tier. Yeah, I guess. I guess yeah. so. Just a continuous good. decline. Yes, the pathetic good. tier needs feeding. Yeah, now we have the last one in the 20, 22nd now dynasty, so <laughs> um, now it's Osorkon 4. And, oh uh, boy, the, the relief of him is dumb. Oh, uh, uh, Osorkon the 4, you look like such a <laughs> dope. That, that relief is really dumb. <laughs> do, do. Well, uh, Ruled uh, one of the most chaotic and politically fragmented periods of ancient Egypt, dotted with small Libyan kingdoms and principalities. Early reign. Oh, so he was basically the one who was defeated by the Kushites from the south when they conquered uh, Egypt. So, uh, oh, yeah, that was as like Kushites can re reorganize their kingdom and eventually conquered Egypt. So he was the one who was ruling uh, Egypt uh, right before that, they conquered it. Yeah, well, that's that's probably in the bad tier, isn't it? Yeah. Well, although I mean, it's such a tough time, I kind of feel sorry for the guy. He's got Assyrians and Kushites to deal with. Egypt is dotted with. <laughs> With Libyan kingdoms that have been fragmented, um, he had to... his, his relief is horrible. <laughs> this guy, this pharaoh, had to deal with Sargon the Second. Ooh, there was no. He had no chance. Yeah, yeah. Shalmaneser the Fifth, and yeah, yeah, Sargon the Second. That's not going to be fun, is it? You yeah, know, there's no holding up against that. This is. I, I don't even think he would have had a chance. He's yeah, I don't. Pathetic, what, I he's definitely like, bad. Yeah, he's definitely bad, but it, it, yeah, yeah, that I mean, seems just, about. It just uh, sucks to be him, you know. Yeah, but yeah, can't, can't really do much. Sucks to be you. Wrong time at the wrong place. Yeah, sorry, mate. Should have been Pharaoh. Mm, sorry. Yeah. One of those where you give it to a distant cousin. Yeah, so uh, now I guess we're moving on to the 23rd dynasty, which was ruling uh, at the same time as the 22nd one, which uh, split off around uh, 837 BC after uh, Osorkon II. So that was another line, and uh, 
this mm. one we're starting with uh, Takelot the second who was ruling like uh, this this little uh, yellow piece on the map who were also were based at uh, Heracleopolis so those rulers also split off later on so you know, just a, lo a lot of chaos at the time makes uh, sense yeah, so, uh, but this one, uh, just basically we had an uh, insurrection and uh, you know, what, little, what little area they controlled, we kind of started uh, losing that as well to various rebels. It's hard to say with this guy. I'm not finding much that's really speaking to me about him. He's... I mean, he just had all these uh, rebellions and uh, insurrections which he couldn't really deal with, so I don't know, I guess it's just one of the uh, worst uh, tears for him. It's kind of continuing that decline. Yeah. But, but... Yeah, I know it's it. It's pretty, pretty terrible. No. Whether he had control over it or not. Bad. Bad or terrible. I'll leave this up to your judgment. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I guess just that terrible. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That sounds pretty terrible. Uh, not much can be said. Ah, uh, but wait, wait, but was he worse than, uh... Was he worse than old mate, uh, Shoshank the... No, not the fifth, hang on. Where's Bad Relief Boy? Oh crap, I've lost him. <laughs> That's Osorkan. Yeah, is he worse than Osorkan? But I mean, uh, Osorkan had to fight the Syrians and the Kushans, yeah, so he yeah. had, they had just, uh... A more difficult he gets situation. A Sargon pass. Okay, he got a Sargon pass. Alright, I'll yes. let it slide this time. <laughs> now we have um uh Ed the Best the first bronze uh, star, so being the only thing uh, surviving <laughs> from him I guess. Shapely lad. Ah, look at those hips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. His He's ascension to power hips. plunged his ascension to power plunged Thebes into a protracted civil war, which lasted for oh nearly God. three decades <laughs> between two competing factions. <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> god, this guy's pathetic. This <laughs> comically terrible. Yeah, this is a comic book bad just not bad guy, he's just a comic book. Incompetent. Yeah, yeah I guess yeah. pathetic tear can be. Yeah, pathetic tear. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, what we got? We got uh, Ayuput the first, who was the co regent with, with uh, the previous guy, and this is probably the, <laughs> the shortest description of on Wikipedia so far, like literally just like uh, five lines of text, and that's it. So, I mean, just probably <laughs> irrelevant, like, immediately. No, even, like, no no, no image. N nothing. Yep, this guy's irrelevant. Yeah. Go to irrelevant, stay in irrelevant. Uh, so now we have uh, Shoshank the 6. Oh, <laughs> your, no, it's another it's, uh, Shoshank! Your, your, your favorite uh, uh, line of battles. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the Ramses again, please. I don't care how shit most of them are. Just a bag of Ramses. Yeah. Just one bag of Ramses. Alright, how bad was this show, Shank? Pretty bad. Six year reign. Uh, Another Wikipedia no. <laughs> page. His uh, royal name was uh, Usar Matre Meriamun Shoshank. Which is unusual because it is the only known example where the epithet Meriamun, beloved of Amun, appears within a king's. I don't know what a cartouche is. That sounds kind of. 
It's a bit like the signature, isn't it? The um, uh, it's like a handful of um, uh, hieroglyphs that would be presented in a sort of oval. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. 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 Damn, that makes sense. I've seen, yeah, you see these when you when you see like ancient Egypt related. Yeah. It's it's like the royal seal yeah. of that specific yeah. pharaoh. Gotcha. So yeah, I guess just some, another ir irrelevant one. Yeah, seems quite irrelevant. Yep. Uh, okay, moving on. Now we have Osorkon the third. Uh, yeah, uh, I thought we already have had him, but apparently not. Yeah. It's kind of it's getting kind of confusing, but uh... more Osorkons and more. Well, Mary Moons and more tackles. If I see one more show shake, I'm gonna <laughs> scream. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, right. Osorkon the third, um, uh, he had like 28 years. And, May have been motivated to defeat or pacify any remaining supporters of Shoshink the the sixth the rival faction. Um, Apparently, he, the, it said that he lived to like uh, something like eighty years, or possibly even a hundred years. Though I find that quite uh, questionable that he would have lived to such a long age. But I mean, yeah, no, I don't quite. I don't uh, quite think that's right. It was all the vitamin supplements they had back then. <laughs> Take your magnesium pills, Sorkin the Third. <laughs> I must outlive all the Shoshinks. <laughs> oh god, as long as they keep naming their children Shoshank, they're gonna live forever. Oh, this guy's that's... not speaking to me either, he's just... He probably lived into his 80s, which is pretty cool, but... Yeah. That's... That is the only interesting thing about him. Yeah, there's very little else that's like... Yeah, which is just very much in the decline stage, r right before, like, uh, Kush conquered uh, Egypt, so... His last yeah. battles didn't really do that much of a good job. Yeah. Makes sense. So, another uh, one? Or another. Or a pathetic one? I guess just. Uh, irrelevant, maybe? I don't know. I guess so. Yeah, yeah he's a bit That's irrelevant. Uh, okay, so now we have Tack a lot the third. Uh, who had. Uh, he was ruling with his father or Sorkon the third for uh, a short while and then. Uh, uh, on his own for a few years. Yeah, if your dad lives to 80, you're not gonna have much of a reign. But no, even he got pretty big of a reign, didn't he? Relatively big. Yeah, it was 15 years. Yeah. 15 years. What did he pull off? Mm -mm -mm. Uh, I don't know, I'm not really seeing that much accomplished by him. Yeah, wow, but another boring tackle lot. Who just saw that one coming? <laughs> yeah, no, this is another irrelevant pharaoh. I've got I've got nothing. I I just I don't like him. I don't like the <laughs> yeah. tackle lots. I don't like the Asorkans, <laughs> and I fucking hate the show shakes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, it's but, the th third intermediate period, it's, you know, not, not that much exciting stuff is gonna be happening. Uh. I feel like every time I, I show up to the stream, it's uh, a little late, and, like, it's always... <laughs> it's <laughs> both miss, in an intermediate period where everyone is just sucks. <laughs> it's just... Yep, you're joining yeah. right when we're just running Get out of... We're just... <laughs> <laughs> no more, please. Rude him on. One more Osorkin, and then we'll let you. Alright. Nah. Rude him on. Who's this? 
This um, was a barrel. Okay, he's the youngest son of Asorkon the third, the brother of Takalot the third. Oh, I'm getting madder by the second. He's poorly attested, credited it with a reign of about two to three years, a small amount of decorative work. He's dumb. He's got nothing going on for him. He's irrelevant. He died. That's it. Moving on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Apparently, the best of us. So now we have a Shoshank the seventh. We've got another Shoshank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, very exciting. Uh, very exciting. Oh, look! And he's poorly attested! <laughs> <laughs> After 25 years, and we know nothing about him. Yeah, we have. Uh, I want Polly. him to go in the pathetic tier. I uh, think Jump is named Shoshank, and he's so irrelevant. Let's just put him as a heretic. <laughs> I mean, uh, I just. Heretics, <laughs> at least, uh, they are uh, interesting in some way, but. This is just... ah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The boomerang of being cool, yeah. Yeah, this, I mean, doesn't really have, like, an image, like, not, nothing. So, yeah, but, you know, at least oh. we're finally done with the uh, Shoshanks and uh, all those Dakalos and Osorkons and all that. I hope you're right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and we're actually done with the 23rd Dynasty. The kind of didn't really achieve anything. Uh, none, none of its pharaohs were like doing anything. So yeah, probably like, probably like the the worst dynasty like <laughs> of of all of them so far. Wow, Oof, what a time to join the stream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. n n n now we have like this uh, Ini, the fourth, who was. A local ruler of Thebes, so like he barely ruled like one city, I guess, before being conquered by uh, by the Kushites. So, yeah, oh, I guess, a, I guess, a for effort. Yes, that's that. Yeah, local guy managed to sneak himself in at the end of the, the dying days of a dynasty. Hmm, what's the? Yeah, nah. Still, still not worthy of anything higher than maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. no. It's just I'm um, just terrible or something like that. He only reigned at Thebes. Oh, it says yeah. here that uh, it says here that the the successor of Pia removed Eni from power and carried out a damnatio memoria campaign against his monument. Uh... So this guy out. got like, yeah, this guy got like Soviet, you know how the like Stalin would like get rid of people's pictures, yeah, like get We've, rid of people's pictures. There's a few pharaohs that did the old, uh, the old Demetrio yeah. Memoria. There's a lot yeah. of pharaohs that did that. A heap of them did it to wipe out Akhenaten and his existence yeah. too. Wow. Well, what was that about? Meeny, 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 moving on then. Yeah, so now we have a 24th dynasty, which consisted of two rulers. Uh, the first one being uh, Tefnacht, and some uh, Tefnak the first, I guess. Uh, and he ruled for... Uh, he was ruling at uh, size, which is uh, like here in the western uh, delta, so it was just a very... A regional, well, most, all of them are regional, but like this one is uh, Western Delta, so that's where they were during these few years. And uh, yeah, I mean, for seven years, uh, uh, I succeeded the Libyans uh, who were in that, that region before him. Yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah, was we, not actually ascended to the chiefs of the mob and the leader. Hmm. Not to the local prince of his local region. 
managed over time to reestablish his kingdom's control in the Delta, in the political vacuum. After, have we done this, um, Pia? Pia? I know he, he will come uh, later. Okay, gotcha. gotcha. Tefnacht is not giving me anything other than a migraine. <laughs> Put him where he deserves to be. Yeah, I guess that's kind of irrelevant. Just like most of yeah. his uh, intermediate period. No. I mean, yeah. like, uh, at least the second intermediate period was, was interesting because you now we had that whole uh, war between the uh, Hicks. We had the Hicksers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this yeah. one is just kind of just just kind of sad, you know. Just these like very short the reigning uh, pharaoh is not really doing that much, and just this decline continuing. So, you know, just 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 kind of sad. Nothing else. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so now we have uh, ba bacon uh, Renef. Mm, bacon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ken Renef, or as the ancient Greeks called him, Bokoros? Bonchoros? Boch. 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 Joke. Probably. God, he's not given me much to work with. Just Bacon that he was written a lot about by Ptolemaic authors and Manetho. Yeah, Manetho. Hmm. That's, that's kind of odd. That he'd have such a... The first is the story that a lamb uttered the prophecy that Egypt would be conquered by the Assyrians. Later, the second was that Bacon Narafen was captured by Shebitko. <laughs> Bacon Ranefen. <laughs> Sorry, just win. Okay. Um, Smenkare and whatever one of the other earlier pharaohs was, yeah, they were hard to pronounce. We're having a lot of trouble with backhand Renef. Yeah. It's just something about the way that word is. You just, there's two en the ends are separated in a weird. I don't know. I don't like his name. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to call him Bacon. It's yeah. Bok Choi. Faro Bacon or Faro Bok Choi. You can decide if you want to be vegan or not. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's about as interesting as this pharaoh gets, I think. I mean, uh, there's like a story that he abolished the debt slavery, but that was, uh, I guess, kind of just invented. So, yeah, uh, yeah, Diodorus or Hecateus could have invented the story in order to support an ideological debate over debt slavery in Greek society. So I guess it doesn't really yeah, matter. Yeah. 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 There's very little. Pharaoh uh, Bacon's irrelevant. Yeah, so so now we are moving to the 25th dynasty. So, I mean, uh, we. Like we said, we kind of. We're going to stop at this one to continue in the next stream as uh, it's kind of a new period in Egyptian history. So, it could, uh, could be a good point to uh, stop and continue in the next stream. Yeah, the next stream will get us into the classical period. And that should lead us into the last couple of dynasties where the Ptolemies yeah. are. T -t 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 Ptolemy! Sorry. That's a... Greek. <laughs> Heretics. Yeah, yeah they're so, all going on the So I think, I think that's, that's a good time to probably end this stream as like, Sam is already suffering. <laughs> Um, I'm so fucking mad right now. <laughs> and he, he, he needs to recover. And we've been going for like uh, three and a half hours. So, uh, you know, it's been, it's been a while and we still have quite a few of them. So we, we may as well leave them for the third and you no, know, probably a final stream to finish up. Uh, so, yeah, I guess, I, guess, I guess that's it for today. So, thank, thank you for yeah. joining. Thank you. Thank you. This has been the Sobeko Tep Ancient Egyptian Kings tier list, sponsored by Sun and Bronze and by Alexander Ball, a country ball tale. We look forward to having you join us for our third and hopefully final installment, where we cover the classical period, moving on into the Ptolemaic period and the end of the ancient Egyptian dynasties. And hopefully we won't have to ever 
deal with another show shank again. <laughs> yeah. We hope. we hope. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us. Yeah. Th thank you everyone who uh, followed jo and who, who joined to watch. And this this one uh, hopefully will be recorded, so I'll put it up on Twitch and on YouTube, so you can uh, watch it at your own uh, pace if you want. Uh, but yeah, that's that's it for today. The next stream should be probably in the next uh, few days as well. I'll let you all know when it takes place. But yeah, for now, that's it. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.